This stuff doesn't even fit in here anymore. Oh, no. We got to get some prep time before the show. Hey, it's the Bennington Show. Uh, Eagles parade today. Uh, I'm Ron Bennington. There's Gail Bennington. Yo. I'm Ron Bennington. I was watching the uh, feeds today. I think it was... um, I don't know what it was. One of the one of the channels in Philly, and you know today is a very nice day. It, this is the daytime Philadelphia, yeah. right? And uh, the reporter, you know, there's families and stuff at the parade. It's not, it's not crazy take over the night uh, time Philadelphia. <laughs> and then the the reporter's like, "Where's the national media reporting on this? <laughs> Why don't they report on the good stuff?" I'm like, "You can't." say that burning the streets and turning over cars and climbing poles right. isn't hilarious and any news would be glad to have that also probably it's not going to be a news story because everyone else is able to have parades without yes. going crazy yeah <laughs> no one wants to bring us up on the national news these people just out here nice having their kids play hooky <laughs> Boy, when do you think this, uh, should this be the last day of the buzz, the exciting buzz of your team winning I, something? I guess it should be, but I I kind of doubt it. I look at that there. Yeah, there's a ton of people out there. They're having a good time. What are you going to do? Go, Eagles, go. And, and they're behaving themselves. They are. But you're not going to see that on the national news. Mm-mm. Mainstream media is not going to show you when we're not burning stuff. They only want to talk about when we're ornery. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> That's the only time. Well, it's uh, good to be here today. Big, big day uh, in America. Look at Joe Biden looking like he's trying to run again. He came out of the woodwork yeah. because this uh, Hope Hicks uh, boyfriend is a wife beater. Which they said that <laughs> this guy couldn't even get security. <laughs> Like they, they had to know this shit was coming. They just yeah, ignore it. They, they must have. Known. Wow, look at that crowd there. That looks like Woodstock '94. So this is like two, two exes came forward, two ex wives on this guy. Yeah, yeah. One, one showing off his black eye, the whole thing. And poor Hope picks the last guy that she dated, right? Because mm-hmm. she can only date guys that are in the inner circle. Sure, of course. She doesn't see anybody else. And he was the one, uh, I think, Lewandowski that grabbed the girl from Breitbart by the throat that time. Oh, God. Started shaking around, and Bannon was like, I don't think that happened. The girl was like, fuck you, man. <laughs> that dude fucking grabbed me. So it's tough. She's a type. It's tough for hopes. Who's she going to date? You know what I mean? It's yeah. like it's like she's a, a shut-in. Like she's homeschooled. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. She's not going to meet a lot of fellas, and every time she meets one... He fucking beats up chicks. I'll tell you, none of them better touch that little Hope Hicks. Mm-mm, no. Former model. She's so dainty. She's tall and dainty, though. Yeah. Is that a possible thing to be, or is yeah. that not? I guess it is. I didn't realize she was so tall. Maybe she's always in heels. I can't tell. <laughs> but she seems like she's, you know, uh, a long, uh, cool woman in a black dress. To me, that's what she seems like. I don't know if we can get measurements on her. Give me the stats. Yeah. I think the whole White House staff has that. They should. Like they should have stats. like little cards that go out, like little baseball cards. <laughs> Not seeing a height. That's odd. What's happened to you, Wikipedia? I know. They're normally on top of this. Oh, do, 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 do. Five foot eight. Okay. okay. That's tall to me. That's, yeah. That's what we call Bennington tall. <laughs> She'd end up playing the center for us if we were going to pick that game. (laughs) I mean, uh, I would start Chris and Vito, but we're not going to get a full game out of either one of them. (laughs) 48? No way. Now, what is this thing that the Cowboys uh, owner said? He said as he was watching the Super Bowl, he was biting his pillow in anger. Because he was so. What pissed. was he doing, face down on the bed? <laughs> That's really weird. Getting yeah. pegged. He's oh, never heard this. <laughs> that was so. the implication, Chris. Yeah, we leave it pegged. at that. We leave it at that. And so, because as soon as you say pegged, it's over. You know what I mean? We could have like teased around it a little bit without coming off as obviously homophobic as you are. But <laughs> do 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 do. Um. Hey, Sean. Sean, what's up? 
watched Big Brother last night for the first time ever. Mm. Like, uh, I forgot all about it. How was it, Vito? I'm into it. I'm so far, I like Celebrity Big Brother. They picked the right celebrities who are there to play and want to win. Jesus Christ, what are you? Mm-hmm. Are you talking to a cop right now? <laughs> no, I'm it's like, me and you, pal. I'm telling you, Shannon Elizabeth, I was watching the feeds last night. She was in there studying rooms, knowing that a competition was going to come up that she had to know that stuff. For. That's exciting. I want to watch a fucking show where someone studies a room so they can memorize things for later. <laughs> I was I thought it was really funny. So immediately the girls start like doing alliance talk like, yeah. hey, maybe we should ban up. And then the biggest thing was everyone just going like this. I can't believe I'm maybe going to be in an alliance without Marosa. Like, I don't know how I feel about it, but, you know, I want to win. <laughs> that's what ha- that's politics. my friends. <laughs> right. You end up in alliances with people that you don't <laughs> right. want to be. They also kept saying, I can't believe the girls have never tried to align together and take over the house before. I know. They're like, we have, have, and they're like, the women never align. We have a great (laughs) idea. It's like literally all like last season. They said that last season. season. Yeah. They say it every season. I don't know why nobody ever thought. Girls Alliance. (laughs) Girls Alliance would be great. And they just keep on saying they could have bro code, but we have ho code. Oh, Jesus (laughs) Christ. That's not helping the cause. (laughs) It's 2018, I guess. It's all about hell code. Apparently, Ron Artest has already tried to walk out of the house twice. <laughs> Let him out. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot all about it. I was out um, doing roast battle last night. How was the roast battle? Roasty? Brutal. Really? Brutal. The way these people talk about dead parents and no. uh, uh, special needs brothers. Not good. <laughs> It's cruel. Mike Racine, his brother, just was pounded by this. Uh, oh, no. Last night. I think she has done Gail Meets Girls, too. I got to check. Should have wrote it down. No guest of that show would ever make someone. Did you have a. One of someone special. Was there needs someone brother? in Gail Meets Girls that had do not. Serve me to bartender tattoo. Oh, yes, that's uh, Karen Feehan. That's her. Yes, Karen brutal. Feehan. Yeah, she is brutal. brutal. I forgot I've had her on the show, and I 100% understand how, yeah. She's quite cruel. Yeah. And uh, but, uh, her and Racine were just fucking haymakers on each other. <laughs> um, Yeah, that fucking roast battle. Um, uh, Larry, Larry, what's up, Larry. buddy? Yeah. How you doing? I, I'd like to uh, just acknowledge that uh, the Grateful Dead lyricist John Perry Barlow passed away yesterday, and uh, he was the guy who wrote most of the songs with Bob Weir. Yeah, I saw that. I think, like, Cassidy is probably one of my favorite songs by the Dead. Uh, but he was, like, uh, he was the, Bob Weir's lyricist. Oh, really? And then also uh, had a ranch. He <laughs> was a rancher. <laughs> nice. Seems like a pretty cool fucking life, that right? That sounds like a really and cool... He's very, very, very into the internet. He was one of the developers of the internet. Yeah, he wanted and... to do this thing where the internet didn't belong to any country and no, right. no country could... Yeah. Fucking, but that all fell to shit. That's a pretty varied career, if you're looking at those that's, three things. That's the kind of life you want, though. I know. Rancher slash lyricist slash internet pioneer. Well, look, I touched this. It turned purple. I got to move this pink. over. I'm, you know, I'm all surrounded by screens. But at what end? You know what I mean? But at what end did I can't even reach a microphone? You know, I want to fly where eagles fly. You know? <laughs> that should be my thing. You ain't no goddamn son of a bitch. No. I'll tell you something right now. I think being a lyricist would be the fucking greatest, because you just write some shit down, then you go like this. See what you can do with this. Yeah. I mean, look at Bernie Talpin's life of being a lyricist for Elton John all these years, right? He splits the money, and then he can walk through a mall without everybody fucking bothering him. Best case scenario. No, he doesn't get any of that live cash. (laughs) Right. Purple as fuck. All because I touched it. Vito's looking more and more manly every day. Yeah. We lost boy Vito. I know. Where is he? 
He's Baby's in, all grown up. Yeah, he's grown up. He grown up. He grown oh, up. Look, he did it. Oh, uh, no, he didn't. What is it that you touch that and it turns fucking? So the wire is all. The wire's Are all. Are you talking up. about that show out of Baltimore? No, no. <laughs> that is it. fucking messed up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's so sad. What happens there? <laughs> you try to move some product, you know. Maybe I'll just be like Prince and learn to see everything in purple. Maybe that'll be my thing. Get all these screens purple now, please. There you go, Vito. You did it. I just it. won't touch it again. Vito. It seems like you should be allowed to touch things, though. And this big thing takes up your room. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. It's a fucking mess right You're now. You're too screeny. I know. I'm too goddamn screeny for this this world. And then when they added this thing, it sucked ass. I know. It I does agree. Nothing but take up room. Like I don't even know because you have th this one, I have this one. I don't. I honestly don't know which is worse. They're, They're all both bad. The worst. They're all really bad. They're both the worst things. Why can't I just have one that beings. just is right here? That's what I'd like. Is that a problem for anybody? I gotta fucking use it like a hand mic, like I'm, you know. Mm hmm. Fucking emceeing a <laughs> fucking one nighter in Poughkeepsie. Hey, everybody. Thanks for coming out tonight. Ba, 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 do, do, do. Uh, Bruce. Bruce, what's up? All right. Fuck Big Brother. Fuck Vito. All right. You got five million, de five million people in Philly. I can't be there today because I start a new job tomorrow. And that's what you're talking about? Is Big Brother? Well, what are we oh, supposed now, to talk I'm about? A fucking parade? Oh, there goes some bikes. Better, it ain't a parade. There's five million people down there. It ain't a parade. Who gives a it's shit if there's the five million people? In the city of Philadelphia's history, other than signing the Constitution. I don't even think that even comes close. But I mean, what are you supposed to say? There's the same fucking bus all day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're happy about it. But it's a parade. We're allowed to have other interests. I never want to be a broadcaster who has to fucking do a parade. Uh, do you know there's over 18,000 uh, flowers that makes up this boat? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Look who it is. It's Snoopy. <laughs> Snoopy's been a part of this parade since 1962. Oh, Snoopy. <laughs> and here's Snoopy's friend, Woodstock. Ah. He's been with us since right after the big concert, Woodstock, 1969. He's bringing peace and love to everybody in the city of Philadelphia today. What kind of update does he want? Here comes so. Swoop again, <laughs> the Eagles mascot. Ah, Swoop looks like he's flapping his arms like they're wings, but they're not. I mean, let us do the drink of fucking Bud Light on the. Mm, we're in the stupid dog so hats. It kind of yeah, sounds I like to, I don't know what to say about a parade. It also kind of sounds like if you're starting the job tomorrow, okay, yeah. you just go to the parade. Today. What kind of job you fucking starting anyway? That you can't go to a parade <laughs> the day before. <laughs> Look at this fat guy just running along with the fuck up. <laughs> and the whole five million people. There's what three million people who live there anyway. What's the big fucking deal? <laughs> Oh, and here comes the Pope. He's all dressed up. His <laughs> dog hat on. I think that's the Pope. I'm not sure. Uh, they said that John Kelly knew about the abuse allegations of his guy for months. And he he came out yesterday really? and said, you know, what a great guy. Um, and now they're saying that John Kelly, allegedly, this is the reports I'm hearing, uh, was the one who pinned the girl's arms back so oh, this guy no. could fucking just lay her out. No, he says he's shocked that I, I'm fucking shocked that a guy would ever hit a girl. There's no place for that mm -hmm. in civilized society. <laughs> and now here's Philadelphia. <laughs> I can it's still running? <laughs> yeah. He's got, he, no, I think you're a couple minutes behind on that one. Because <clears throat> I'm looking at oh, the okay. TV and that's the thing. That's, okay. Yeah. We got the wrong one up. Goddamn son of a bitch. Um, hey, Ethan. Ethan, what's up? Mr. Biff and the Eagles count. Hell, 
Hey, buddy. <laughs> What's happening? I'm super bummed out because I can't go to the parade because it was between me and my coworker going, and he's going. I don't know what to do. Um, you know, <laughs> what to do? You got to work. You're a fucking man. <laughs> There's no I way, like... So bad. I, I told you when the Giants uh, did their parade, uh, I let all the producers go, but I never, you know... And then they came back, look, I got this T-shirt. It was up like, Giants rule or some shit. It's a great T-shirt. Like a kneel before the Giants. <laughs> I just, I'm not a parade guy. From the get. No. I mean, the amount of times that I'm coming to work and I'm fucking mad because there, there's a parade between me and work and I have to say to the fucking cop, how am I supposed to get to work then? He goes, you're going to wait with all these other people. Well, what am I going to do? Look at a fucking float? <laughs> Look at a bunch of fucking cops on motorcycles? Like, how cool. The cops have motorcycles. I fucking see them every day. I don't need to see them lined up. I like this because it's like not really any floats, but just buses. Just double deckers. With <laughs> you would think they'd have some mummers or something to fucking yeah. put this thing over. <laughs> Where's Stallone? They should have fucking... I know. Somebody should be pulling Stallone along in a wet red wagon. <laughs> Uh, Vito, who has bought me two hats so far, <laughs> I wore the other one last night too, and told everybody I was a champion. You are a champion. I think it's probably if you look at Gaslight Digital, uh, you will see me <laughs> wearing that hat. <laughs> and then people are going like this: "Congratulations, Ron!" And I'm like, I never gave up hope. <laughs> you know, I just stayed in there. I go, well, Wentz went down. I know a lot of people are upset, but I'm a false guy. Weren't you the one who called the Philly special? You know, if, remember we talked about there in the air yesterday, right? Yeah. Fucking Chris tried to send it in like it was like he was breaking news. Because he took Vito's breaking news spot. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Here's some breaking news. Foles called the special. <laughs> some hot video. Yeah, that thing was on Monday night. That same video. It was an um, exciting moment, but... But Vito uh, has been looking into DVD packages for us, too. Nice. Yeah. I'm really excited about it. I gotta figure out whether I have a DVD player. I don't know what I don't think I do are. anymore, yeah. but something must play a DVD in my, in something, my home. <laughs> yeah, something does. You have, the, you have the Xbox, right? Yeah. That plays it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Blu-rays, too. Okay. <laughs> what, what should I get? On Blu-ray, I mean, if you want the full 1080p experience, you're going to go with the Blu-ray. Um, hey, uh, Scott. Scott, what's up? Hey, the local sports guys, uh, you're talking about how hard it'd be to cover a parade. They're hilarious. They talked about the parade for about five minutes. And they kind of delved into the slobs in the crowd. <laughs> then, uh, the, one of the guys was talking about his wife and the relationship, how it's going to hell. And you brought up... Uh, Stallone, they said the same thing. They said, where the hell is Stallone? And now I think if I switch back over, I believe they're still talking about Rocky IV. <laughs> <laughs> it's very hard. Yeah, it's not easy, particularly, you know, you don't, like, even with a regular, like, like the Macy's Day, at least there's dumb factoids to Dude, keep bringing just, up. They don't improvise at all in the Macy's Day parade. Yeah. You just fucking hear the Today Show people going like this. Um... Oh, here comes Popeye. He's over 180 feet in length. <laughs> weighs up to 5,000 pounds. Sure likes his spinach. There goes Popeye. <laughs> it's the fucking worst thing that's ever happened. And that includes a world where there's been a holocaust. I gotta admit, if fucking Jerry Jones being upset, there's two things. I don't like people who go Against their conference, let alone their division. You know what I mean? Like, if the fucking Vikings would have beat us, I'm an NFC guy. I'm pulling <laughs> for the fucking Vikings in that game. I'm right. not going crazy, jumping up and down. Right. But the guy that beat you, you want to see you got beat by Absolutely. the champ. Not by some fucking ham and egger from the other league. I agree. I think you always want the team who beat you to go on. If I'm a Jets fan, I want to see uh, the Patriots. That's my division. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not put in stone. You can have personal hate. But what are you doing sitting there biting a fucking pillow? What? You're a fucking terrible owner. I don't give a shit what anybody says. There's only one owner to me that's worse. 
And that's that son of a cock, son of a drunk cock in Indianapolis. I fucking despise that dude. And I was glad when his fucking coach backed on him. First of all, who starts to put out press releases before you sign a contract with someone? Yeah, Never. I, I don't even think you're supposed to do that. And like, then they're like, we're going to wreck legally. that motherfucker. Really? Because he's got a job with the fucking <laughs> with the best team in football. <laughs> <laughs> And they gave him, you know, everything that he wanted. That's what you do. You're the same fuckers that cut people for no apparent reason. You know what I mean? And yet you get your feelings hurt. Uh, here's Hayden Fargo. Hayden, what's up? Hey, um, so did you guys check out the uh, Quincy Jones interview? I did. did. Uh, well, I, I saw the one. The, see, I saw the thing the other day where he said right. Ivanka. But then Gail's aunt sent me the... Um, whole interview and it was just fucking hilarious like every place he went it's one of the funniest people on the planet i haven't seen i haven't seen it but i just keep seeing just like little fat like people just posting clips and different yeah. phrases from it but i haven't watched at it one yet. point he said to the guy man like hey in the middle of it like hey what's your sign <laughs> right and then later he goes like this he he got a question that he didn't like he goes like this act like a pisces <laughs> 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 Quincy Jones is the best. I mean, he came in here and he's an old, old guy. And he's walking slow and a little stumped over. But this is a guy who produced a lot of the Sinatra stuff, a lot of the great jazz stuff, all the way up through, you know, like John Legend or some shit. Right? Yeah. I mean, he's a, a great producer. And he had these CDs with him. And he would like see like different young girl interns, right? Which are college age interns. He's like, look, I want you to listen to this music. And they're, they're excited. And he goes like, this, let me get your phone number so I could call you later and see what you think of it. <laughs> oh and I'm not God. even kidding you when I'm saying he's close to 70 years older. <laughs> well, the, the best part about that uh, interview is how he names who killed Kennedy. Yeah. And then a couple of questions later goes, Marlon Brando was a great cha-cha dancer. Also, he fucked everything. He fucked a mailbox. He fucked Richard Pryor. He fucked Marvin Gaye. He fucked everything. Now, uh, Richard, one of Richard Pryor's ex-wives came out, right? And said, yeah, yep. Richard fucked. Richard fucked. Well, Marvin you know, you know really? what I know. Yeah. Cocaine's a hell of a drug. And if you do enough cocaine, you're probably going to end up fucking Marlon Brando. Well, that's some cocaine I wouldn't mind doing. <laughs> I want to fuck the Marlon Brando of One-Eyed Jacks. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot of people know that movie. It was a Western. I saw it on TV <laughs> when I was a, a little kid. And I was honestly thinking to myself, so uh, men are pretty, huh? <laughs> Interesting. I didn't know, I didn't know that because, you know, I only saw guys in my neighborhood. <laughs> um, that's just such a strange pairing, though, if that's true. The two of them together. I'm fine when to be honest. Any pairing of men is strange. You know, <laughs> I guess you're right. Well, they always said that uh, Marlon Brando used to bang Wally Cox, who was like the nerd of his generation. Yeah, who's Wall Wait, who's Wally Cox? You'll see a picture of him. I mean, look at that dude. <laughs> hmm, strange. Bottom, I'm guessing. Oh yeah, fucking Brando was on top of that, <laughs> banging him like he was Jerry Jones. <laughs> do 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 do. All right, there's a, looks like a guy is just dressed like a mummer and high-fiving everybody as he walks Great. down the street. Good. So the kids can know they high-five the mummer. That's Jason Kelsey. That was it? Yeah, it's Jason Kelsey. That's how he's dressed. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> what, what channel is covering that? ESPN? ESPN 2. I'm fucking surprised. The Olympics are going on, man. <laughs> <laughs> the Winter Olympics are happening. ESPN two is just fucking cruising along with a fucking bad parade through Philly. Was that just playing on a loop? You think? Should be. That and Meek. Yeah, <laughs> Meek is fucking just beloved there. <laughs> Look, there's the least amount of fucking confetti I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> It's amazing. I mean, that doesn't even constitute his flurries. 
It looks like someone just tore up their paycheck and threw it. Do 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 do. Hey, Ron, what's happening, buddy? Hey, Ron, I heard on uh, KYW this morning one of the Eagles is going to dress as a mummer on the parade. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chris just gave us the big update. It's Jason Kelsey. <laughs> Chris just broke that fucking story. Whatever Sorry, right dude. Yeah. That's good, man. I love it when you're fucking getting that shit out there. Breaking news. Mm-mm-mm. This just did, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Jason Kelsey is dressed as a fancy. Those are the mummers who don't play instruments. <laughs> they just dress fancy. <laughs> they have the string bands, the fancies, and then the clowns. Uh-huh. And the clowns are just dudes that wake up late, put on some bad makeup. Yeah, I don't like. Walk around. They're probably my kids. least least favorite of the group. No, <laughs> they're all my least favorite. <laughs> they're all tied for least favorite. Do 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 do. So, do you think that after this parade, this is the beginning of a change of Philadelphia? The identity has to change. It matures. Yeah, it matures after this because now you're a city of champions. You're a city of champions. You got to carry yourself as such. Mm-hmm. I mean, you've seen Rocky Three when he suddenly had to go and get you know robots and stuff. Yeah, exactly. And even Paulie, Paulie started mm-hmm. doing better for himself. You know. He thought he was doing smart business. Yeah, he fucked up. (laughs) He didn't know. (laughs) (laughs) Did I ever tell you about the time I ran into Paulie on Lexington Avenue? I don't know if you have. It was like, uh, it was back when the Sopranos were on and Paulie had a fucking job on the Sopranos. We hadn't kind of seen him in years, right? So I come out of the fucking, um, the hole there, the subway station. And there's fucking Polly from Rocky. And I'm like, fuck. You know, because, you know, Rocky, what the fuck is stuck? <laughs> I mean, it's locked into a place that I don't even like to admit. I mean, if I keep anything fucking hidden, that's my love for Rocky. So I'm like, hey, he's on The Sopranos. I don't have to bring up Rocky to him. And so I just go, hey, Bert, great job last night because it was on the night before. He goes like this. He goes, eh, he's fucking just making noises at me. Grabs me by the back of the neck and is really fucking stronger than you would think. Like, there was no way I was going to get away. And then he just leans his head in and we're, head, we're forehead to forehead. And he's like, yeah, yeah, take me. And I was like, uh, there was a part of me thinking, I might have to fucking light up Polly right here in the middle of the street. You know what I mean? If he doesn't let go of me, he's I'm just, yeah, I'm just going to have to start hitting that fucking stone head is. <laughs> He was very sweet, but I swear to God, I had no idea. One of the mumbles that he did, of who grabs somebody by the back of the neck no, like that's that? No, that's a very aggressive Like I was play. a nephew. You ever <laughs> have like an uncle who fucking grabs you too strong? <laughs> yeah. Uh, my man would always say, like, when they would be, like, down the boardwalk, his dad would be holding him and his brother by the back of the <laughs> neck. Because I guess, like, not to hold their hands and right, make them feel like sissies. Like <laughs> but he didn't want them <laughs> going far. So he was just, like, just a tight grip at the back of the neck. <laughs> Were they Wildwood? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fucking Wildwood was, like, back then it was, like, being in Lost Boys. <laughs> right. <laughs> What's the name of that, um, they made that video? And and Wildwood. Oh, it's like, I think it's, it might just be called Wildwood and then like 19, whatever, like the year was that they did. Um, It's fucking so great. There's Doug. The man who okayed the Philly special. Didn't call it. You see what what Wentz is doing with Pence? Mm Mm-mm. Yeah, he's replacing him at a prayer breakfast. Wow, that's pretty big. Yeah, that is. Bumping the vice president, especially for Wentz? when you didn't even fucking play in the game. I mean, if I'm Wentz, I'm not wearing that fucking ring. But it does sound like he converted an entire team. I don't know. Those black guys are really Christian, and no yeah. one ever pays attention to it. That's true. I mean, that's why they should all be embarrassed. <laughs> they should be. You know what I mean? Because they only get excited with white Christians, and every fucking black guy, you know. Act like they see something that's evil. Any black guy that I know. Right. You know what I mean? I think you just come to accept it. Every black guy, there's always something that they don't fuck with. 
You know oh, what I mean? Oh, totally. <laughs> Everything. Like, something's the devil. Yeah. My friend, my friend Cal will just be like, if you drop something, he's like, that's the devil right there. That's the devil. The devil did that. Black guys are like, I don't fuck with a color purple. <laughs> that's Satan cape. I'm like, I don't know, dude. It's just a fucking color that we have. <laughs> Do you find that thing? I think it's called Wildwood, New Jersey. It's a documentary. You don't think that's it? No, that's just that just shows rides. I don't want to fucking see rides, Chris. What do you think? I'm a, a child. That's why I'm. That's Look. why I'm still looking. There she is, right there. Turn it up. Preferably up north, New Jersey, North Central, Newark area. Be nice. Well, that's the thing with we live. Everybody's got their nails done, <laughs> so I have to have mine done. You got to be with the fling, you know. You got to do what you got to do, <laughs> and they're all fake. <laughs> they are. Yeah. Maybe I got two real ones. Yes, me? <laughs> Women always have a strike up on men. We've always got our bodies if you keep them in shape. And you've always got the check to cash, no matter which way you look at it. She pointed to her pussy. Yes. You can come up on the boardwalk and just meet somebody like that, you know, in a split second. And, like, it can turn into a serious relationship, like me and Jana. Because, like, <laughs> different. Yeah, you know, I, I met her a couple of weeks night. ago, but we hooked up tonight together, and like I'm probably gonna be with her for the rest of the summer. <laughs> it's different every night. You and never know what's night, gonna happen. It's different. You can stay together forever, or it's different. And whatever happens, happens. Fucked up. It's different every night, and you meet new people. It's the summer. Um, are you okay? <laughs> yeah, no idea where I went. Like, sort of in the right direction, but not exactly. So we waited, like, four months later, I just came back. That's my first sexual <laughs> I like smart guys and, like, funny guys. People with, like, a personality. I don't even care if they're, like, good looking or anything. As long as they treat me right. <laughs> I care about looks. <laughs> That's all she cares about. Take no. Take That's all she look. cares about. <laughs> yeah, she don't care. Ooh, he's good looking. <laughs> he's good looking. Had, for instance, five girls attempt to jump me one time. Attempt to jump me. It's a great work. place. I haven't been in a fight for a while, and because my boyfriend won't let me fight, <laughs> I used to fight once a week, maybe. <laughs> Not anymore, though. in trouble a lot. Yeah, I used to get suspended all the time. Well, I enjoy what? doing it, though. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy doing it, you know? <laughs> fucking some chick up. It just goes on like that. It's fucking hilarious. It's the best. It's the absolute best. It's always different on a boar wall. Mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes you're together for the summer, and some, <laughs> sometimes it's different. So it's different. It's the summer. Uh, it's the boardwalk. Uh, it could be different. Um, sometimes it's the same, but sometimes it's different. <laughs> and I like how he just started petting Janet. Like, yeah. Shh, Janet, <laughs> you sound fucking crazy, Janet. That's just Janet. I'll probably be together with her. Probably the whole summer. Dude, I met her a couple weeks ago, and tonight it just was magic, and we hooked up. I think she's special needs. <laughs> <laughs> My boyfriend don't let me fight for some reason, and I find enjoyment in it. Yeah, <laughs> I enjoy doing it, so probably used to fight once a week. <laughs> I like to have my own private things, my own hobbies, like fist fighting or fighting under the boardwalk. Sometimes you fight on top of the boardwalk. <laughs> One time I took a big handful of sand and put them in this bitch's mouth. <laughs> you know, but it's the summer. It's different. All right, play a couple more minutes. It's so good. And she had eyebrows drawn on with a pencil. I was going to tell her to grow some eyebrows. I, I put there. some girl in the hospital. I got arrested just for She's still in the hospital now. This no. happened like a week ago. <laughs> Down the boardwalk, she sprayed me in the eyes with mace. What? So, I beat her up. I was on the go court cart and he. <laughs> What's your name? What's your name? Every time I went by. And I didn't know what he was saying, so I just smiled back. And when he got off, And then we stood outside.
why they came over, asked us our names. And then we've been with them for three hours. <laughs> and they won't leave us for smoke. <laughs> It's workout. We've been with him for three hours, and he jizzed in my face twice. <laughs> so, you know, it's pretty serious. I'm on a go karts, you know, and I see this guy pointing at my vagina and just yelling at me. And I'm like, does he mean me? You know? Because looks don't matter. I could be with a funny guy. I could be with a fat guy or a guy missing a foot or something. I don't care. As long as he treats me right. I like know? guys who are good looking. Uh, she does. She <laughs> only likes guys that are Not good looking. Not only, but yeah, I like them good looking. 100% <laughs> only. Like she dated a guy with a bracelet. You know? It's always <laughs> class with her. I mean, a bracelet. Not even a watch on it, right? <laughs> he took her on a go-karts. Took her, took her through the haunted house. Summer, it's different. I stabbed this girl to death two weeks ago, <laughs> and the cops are looking for me. <laughs> That's why I'm wearing this bag over my head. It's a disguise. Go Eagles. <laughs> Fucking South Jersey Shore is so crazy. It's like no different than Philly, too. No, Philly just it's goes like the there. Same it's people. the same people. It's the same exact people. They just go there. And and North Jersey and fucking South Jersey don't even know about the other parts. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, there's I mean they're so entirely different. All right, somebody wrote to me, what's this shit about prior and Brando? It's up on the I Bang. Uh, apparently, Pryor's, one of Pryor's many ex-wives said, yeah, he fucked Brando. <laughs> Man, I forgot all about, I would have taped that thing last night, I forgot all about it. I'm sure, it's, I think it's up on, um, what's it called now? CBS All Access. Yeah, that's yeah, how I had to watch it. I don't do fucking shit like that. <laughs> It's airing four nights a week. <laughs> what am I going to do? Fucking find it on my phone? I'm done. I'm out. I'm not going to watch it. Oh, my God. No. To me, it's just like back in the Trump White House, if you watch this. The teen star is pretty annoying. He's, he's, the, he's the Paul. Yeah, he's uh, he's already people are gunning for him. Um, What's he a teen star of? He was in like a Disney show. Nickelodeon show and boy oh, band. Same thing. Yeah, they're they're all crossovers. <laughs> they're all triple threats these days. Here, plug me in over there. Mm -hmm. My phone will be as dead as fucking disco. He's the villain of the season. <laughs> Mark McGrath had to calm him down last night. All right, um, Don just texted me to say uh, disco is not dead. Please, everyone, go to uh, <laughs> Studio Fifty Four <laughs> where disco lives on forever. <laughs> the disco nights. <laughs> Vito showed his pictures. Of his mom in her stu Studio 54 days. She basically looked like the girls yeah. in this video. Yes, there was exactly. no real difference there. <laughs> Very similar. Same hair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That fucking hair has never left Jersey. That, that hair was around in 62 and is around today. <laughs> <laughs> you know? It's just fucking teased up and hard. <laughs> do, 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 do. There's other people in Philly still. Oh, there's that tiny bit of confetti that they put out. Nice. Just a little spray. You would think spray. they would have more than just the team. It's a beautiful day, by the way. Yeah, it's really nice. I think like, that's why they moved it, because yesterday was going to be like kind of snowy and rainy smart. and gross. Uh, like today, I came in, I'm like, God damn, it's so fucking nice. I look up, it's 30 degrees. But because there's no wind. I know. And it's like the sun is out, so it just looks pretty. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Really blue skies. I think each individual bus sometimes just randomly shoots out a little confetti. I think that's what we're looking at. Just a handful. <laughs> just, <laughs> they rationing? Yeah. 
There's not a lot of confetti in Philly. You know, I know. what I mean? There's no Wall Street. I mean, I there. want to see like a ticker tape situation. I hate that the ticker tape is gone. That's all fake t- ticker tape that they have. They just made like yeah, they don't have ticker tape on right. Wall Street anymore. <laughs> Beto, tell us something we don't know. Just give us one fact. It better not be about Big Brother. It better not be about Mr. Matt. Give okay. us one fact we don't know today. Did you know that Gronk is already made his? Seems like he's made his decision for what he's going to do after football. What's that? He's going to go to Hollywood. <laughs> on advice from Sylvester Stallone and Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I know that you think that that's stupid of Gronk. I could think he could make it. No, I think, I mean, he's somebody that I think could be in comedy movies and just be that big, dumb. He's basically Marshawn Lynch, but like a frat boy version of Marshawn Lynch. Yeah, but Marshawn Lynch just on a Hollywood star. Yeah. He's playing for the fucking Raiders. He's got a TV show. What, what show? Marshawn Lynch has a TV show where he just like interviews people and does backflips and shit. Dude, that's <laughs> not that, that's not a living. What he's doing, he's got a fucking web series like the Bay Ridge Boys. <laughs> <laughs> Look, let me just tell you, all right, you know that you have those buddy cop movies where you got the big strong guy and then the silly goofy asshole. Yeah. Gronk could be both of them at the same time. That's true. He could be a one man buddy cop movie. <laughs> I think he's going to enjoy his time in Hollywood. So do you think he's he's done now? I, mean, I, I think it's the right thing to do. I think he's going to leave. Why keep getting beat up? Look at how bad CTE is in the NFL. Look at how bad everybody's bodies are a few years in. He's already won his Super Bowl. There's no reason to stick around. <sighs> See, I'm old school when it comes to that, uh, that you play this game as long as you can. But I know that the younger guys yeah. talk like fucking Vito talks. And then what are you going to do when you're fucking, uh, when your movie flops? Because they don't want you for a second. Well, not everybody's going to be The Rock. Yeah. And The Rock's movies stink. Right. Like, has The Rock ever been in a good movie? No. Mm-mm. Not even one? I uh, can't think of one good one. That he's... I mean, the one where he flies around in a helicopter and saves people <laughs> while California's <laughs> blowing up. <laughs> and that's every movie now. Yeah. That, that... Every fucking movie is a helicopter pilot. That movie looks exactly like the skyscraper one they advertised during the Super Bowl, where the big twist is he doesn't have a leg, I guess. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to admit something embarrassing uh, today. What's that? So I, and I, I just got to the bottom of it. So I'm fucking sleeping in deep today, right? Deep enough that I would have been late for a show that starts at noon. <laughs> Uh, Because my chick was out doing something all morning, and I turned my phone off. I don't like to fucking (laughs) get phone calls, texts. You know, because then their stuff comes in 7 o'clock in the morning. Hey, we locked that thing. Mm -hmm. It's 7 o'clock in the morning. This is true. Ping. I wake up to that every day. (laughs) I don't. But somebody was fucking buzzing the door. And fucking, I was like, I, what is that? Who the fuck is... Now I'm saying in my mind, who's around at fucking 7 o'clock in the morning? But it's more like quarter to 11, <laughs> right? But I don't even know it. Right. <clears throat> Finally, I go over to the fucking door, and I hit it, and I go, the fuck is this? Because I think it's a package guy, right? Nothing. Now I'm up. I'm like, oh, shit, it's 1045. I just found out your mom had somebody from the coffee shop run over and keep buzzing my door. <laughs> That's oh fucking embarrassing. Because <laughs> I, mean, I wasn't so answering the phone because I turned my phone oh off. Oh my God. And then I'm like, fuck. Hey, shit. I would have been late for work. I go, this coincidence <laughs> in my life worked out fine. But then I'm thinking, who runs? You know, what UPS guy is afraid if someone yells at them? You know what I mean? They must get yelled at all day. Right. But I really thought somebody was buzzing me like at seven o'clock in the morning. It was oh fucking quarter to 11. <laughs> Who the fuck is this? So, long story short, that's fucking embarrassing, though, right? Could you go down a couple doors and ring this oh bell? Oh my god, <laughs> that's so horrible. I would have much rather slept and fucking been late for work. <laughs> Let Vito get a chance to give some of his Hollywood facts. That he I has. know he has so many facts. Russell Wilson's in the Yankees farm system now. 
Yeah, but he's not doing anything, right? They just trade him around. He's going to be in a Grapefruit League game, apparently, in spring training. Good for him. What does that mean? It's um, just spring training stuff. Oh. You know, Grapefruit grows down there, so they, oh, their cute. unofficial name is the Grapefruit That's League. So cute. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why they don't call it the Tangelo League, because <laughs> Tangelo's there. <laughs> Seriously, though, aren't, isn't that fucking embarrassing that a fucking person who was at work gets a is it call? Is someone you guys know? I have no idea who it is. <laughs> right now, I'm not going back to that coffee shop ever again. I'm going to look like the man who sleeps late. <laughs> and here's the thing. Like, I always wake I don't like to be woken up by anything. Oh, yeah. So I try to keep a job where I don't. You have a natural wake up time. Natural wake up time. I don't wake up that late on the fucking on the weekends, but I wake up on my own. And now I find out somebody who works at a fucking coffee shop is fucking ringing on the door. <laughs> it's horrible. It's embarrassing is what it is. I'll never go back there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it wasn't. It was so late, too. <laughs> All right. Now I get a text that says, don't be embarrassed. I asked them to just check the buzzer because we've been having buzzer problems. Again. That doesn't make if sense. If something's wrong with my buzzer, I take care of it, okay? <laughs> I'm the guy who takes care of the buzzer. <laughs> that sounds made up, too. I know. <laughs> That's just a fucking... <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> I just told him the buzzer was People out. who aren't good at lying shouldn't try. <laughs> I know. Keep it I a guy a, like me who lies even when the truth... I had a very me. weird circumstance recently where my dog walker... I came home. The dog walker was supposed to come. I have her come every once in a while if I know I'm going to be late. I walk in and I see the money still on the drawer. And she usually leaves a little note about Birdie and nothing is there. So I'm like, holy shit, she didn't come. I don't know why she didn't come. So I text her and she writes back, oh, I totally did come. I just forgot to take the money and I forgot to write the note. But I was just like a little distracted, but I did come. So I was like, hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt. There's no reason that I shouldn't yeah. believe her. So I also had her coming the next day. So I was like, uh, you know what? I think I'm going to throw down the money, you know, for both days. Obviously, she said, I'm going to just yeah. trust that she did come. And so I'll throw down more money for this walk. So then I get a message back from her. She's like, Hey, I just want to let you know, I just started a new thing with my clients where um, once a month I pick someone randomly to have a free dog walk. So I left the 20 from yesterday. And so. Dude, she feels guilty. She didn't want to steal and lie. And I was like, I wish you would have just stole from me and right. lied because now I'll never trust you because that's the world's weirdest thing. Nobody just randomly is like. Oh, um, you know, I've been walking your dog for four years now. Yeah. But now I suddenly have this thing on the same day that I didn't pick up. Isn't that funny? No. Too weird. Now I'm just like, I'm never going to trust. You got to get one of those cameras that's inside your house like people do if their parents I know. I, I need a, I need a, um, like a little nanny cam. You probably see her in there just fucking eating more sandwich. <laughs> not taking the dog out to piss. You get home, the dog's pissing 10 gallons. <laughs> That's odd. I had a big piss when I was with him. <laughs> just making a sandwich. I used to fight once a week. <laughs> and a girl's still in the hospital after a week. She sprayed mace in my face for no fucking reason. <laughs> she had to have a reason. I know. She's just walking down the boardwalk and then she sprayed mace in my face. So I beat her up. I this isn't checking out. Play a little more of that. Some girl in the hospital and she ended up dying because she had a gun to my back. What? And I beat her up all day. How are you every night find the right person? I mean, you can get married one day. You can walk down the altar, get married. The next day, you can find a man. You should have said, oh, I should have married him. I mean, just never know. There was two people just a couple weeks ago that ended up dying. What? They got beat up. They were drunk. They got beat up. They passed out. And they were thrown into a pool. <laughs> They're all dealing meth out of there. <laughs> it's amazing. That's the best fucking shit I've ever seen in my life. 
Look how just how lost boys it all looks. It really is. Dave. Three and a half months before we had sex and everything, and I held on to it for a long time. I mean, this guy, he was he getting, I don't know, how would you say, but he got a little mad that, you know, me and him wasn't going at it fast or like he was used to. <laughs> she blew get, them. Yeah, he had, must have, balls were bluer than his blanket. Where they kill them? And, um... So when I finally done it with him, everything in our relationship went wrong. I mean, his ex-girlfriend came back and said she was pregnant. The whole bit. I mean, it was a mess. I mean, it hurt, but I mean, now he's a loser. I mean, he's doing three to eight years. He's selling drugs. I don't think I don't think you should have sex till you get married because it's it's one thing that people dream. You know, it's like not dreaming to do, but one person that you're always going to love for your life. I think that's who. What's that? It's like something that people dream. I mean, not dream it do, but, you know. <laughs> Friends just looking at her. She's like, what? You're not going to be with a guy for the rest of your life. If you break up with him and then you just stuck out there with another guy, then you're considered a whore. After all this high rigidity, I was just... That's the Wildwood Boardwalk. All those people, the ones that are still alive, are celebrating today. <laughs> as Philadelphia shows off its best. No turning over cop cars. Yeah. No eating horse shit. You don't hear nobody reporting that. Philly's on fire! (laughs) Philly's on fire! (laughs) (laughs) Fucked up weirdos. (laughs) Weirdos who are now champions. A friend of mine fell fell asleep one night on the fucking... uh, Wildwood Boardwalk, and when he woke up, they were pulling his shoes off. Oh my god! <laughs> they were robbing him for his fucking shoes. <laughs> like, like he's a shot cowboy. <laughs> like, it's ridiculous. And he tells that story like, uh, "You fucking believe this? How this fucking town has changed?" I'm like, "So you think that you should be able to just peacefully be able to sleep on the boardwalk at night? <laughs> just yeah. fucking lay down." On the boardwalk, and no one's going to fuck with you. This is why we have homes. All right? Look at fucking Vito's hero, Rob Gronkowski. They're robbing his place, and he's at the Super Bowl. I mean, that's really like a perfect crime. It's like, good. You know for a fact, he's going to be a Super Bowl. You know his brothers and his dad are going to be watching the Super Bowl. Right. Let's go over and get those safes and those guns. <laughs> You know they didn't like crack the safe. They just fucking loaded the safe. I'm sure they did. We'll figure this out later. (laughs) Crack doesn't even have a fucking checking account. He's just sitting around (laughs) with all his money in safes. (laughs) Look at those people. Philadelphia. Man, it really is packed there. I wouldn't went, but I slept too late. Fucking guy from the coffee shop had to buzz me in. (laughs) All right, it's called a Nest camera. People are telling me a Nest camera. Yes, Nest. That way you can watch Birdie all day. That's what I'm going to get. Put a little GoPro around her fucking head. (laughs) All that would be so cute. (laughs) Except for it would just be her sleeping on the couch. I think it's so funny that she was, she just didn't have it in her to steal that money. <laughs> no. <laughs> She's not a total piece of shit. She's like, oh my God, I can't steal Ed lie to her. But that's kind of, you know what I mean? Like, you kind of got to feel good about that person because you at least know they're tossing and turning. Right, right? yeah. Fucking Chris Stanley could commit a murder, lay down, fucking have a, lay in bed, have a giant lasagna dinner and then fall asleep. <laughs> I know, that night she's like... How can I work this out? How am I going to not take this money? She's been so good to me, and I just steal. <laughs> I just steal. Burn up, brown. Is that the fucking thing? That, uh, it's the parade, and they're running um, commercials for Steakum. <laughs> Fox feed. Nice. Whoa, Newly Fox. verified steak. Steak when you can't make it to the cheesesteak <laughs> shop. Steak them. It's a good alternative. Kids, steak ems, like last night, and same thing as for breakfast. <laughs> Charlie Sheen says, uh, well, Lenny Dykstra, um, also a Philadelphia hero, 
fucking sleazy nails. Mm -hmm. And a New York hero at the same time is um, saying that Charlie Sheen is going to be prosecuted for knowingly spreading uh, HIV Mm. with his dick. And then also some kind of fucking scam that he was involved in. Some money fucking thing. Really? Yeah. Now, why is uh, why is he the one breaking this news? They were buddies for a while. They were fucking, I guess, mm-hmm. coked up fucking whore chasing buddies. And obviously, she's done something to wrong him that he feels the need to. They all do things to wrong each other. I mean, if it was really fucking true that snitches get stitches, this would be a world of fucking stitches. <laughs> Are you even old enough to remember when Dykstra played for the fucking Mets? No, but I mean, I've like read about it and seen clips. Let me tell you something. When he played for the Mets, he was about 115 pounds. When he played at Philly, he was a solid 275, <laughs> nothing but cinder block muscle. Yeah, you look thick. how small he was when he played with the Mets. It's unbelievable. And then he was fucking jacked. Yeah, because I only know him as the jacked version of himself. He was he tiny, was wasn't he? Yeah, no, if you look at 86 Mets clips, he wasn't like that big monstrous dude. He was still dumb as dirt, but... What? <laughs> he looks like a little baby. Yeah. That's pretty weird. Oh, my God. And he could fucking play. That's the weird thing. It's like he didn't need the roids to play. The fucking guy could always play ball. You know, I don't know right. why you need muscles to fucking hit a fucking baseball. <laughs> Snap that fucking body. You're like a fucking mousetrap up there. <laughs> Bam. No one ever th- thinks, oh, I got a really thick, solid mousetrap. <laughs> Look at this. I, I laugh at people who have giant posses, and I don't know who one of them are. <laughs> like, why do you need that many people? If you, if, if you have a giant posse, right? You should be Jennifer Lopez. I agree. But other than that, unless you're just like a mega pop star. Yeah. Speaking of which, look for the J-Law thing when she did the Eagles chant on a plane. She tried to get this. Uh, it's YouTube, has it? She tried to get a, a plane all happy about the fucking eggs. <laughs> and... It's Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> I mean, if you cared about the Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So here's one for you, too. So we get this uh, wiki, our boss, giant Ravens fans, loves his Ravens. This year, he's done with them and done with football because somebody knelt somewhere. I don't know. Mm hmm. Some people kneel just because their fucking back hurts, too. You can't blame them. Oh, yeah. So I said to him, you watch the Super Bowl? He says, yeah, just for the commercials, and they stunk. You haven't given up football. No, you can't. It's in your blood. You can't help it. It's the fucking Super Bowl. It's like you pray for something, you don't get it, and you're like, okay, no Christmas this year. <laughs> I mean, even an atheist is going to want to put up a tree and get some mm-hmm. presents. <laughs> Uh, this is, uh, and apparently nobody told her even to do this. This is her, oh, no. <laughs> uh, J-Lo on a plane. Ma'am, put oh, that shit down. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Now, first of all, if you're on a plane on Super Bowl, you don't give a fuck about the Super Bowl. Right. You're some fucking nerd businessman who doesn't watch sports. Right. And then you're like, hmm, I get a good deal. And then you're just going, this is Jennifer Lawrence. Like, everyone's going to go crazy right then. <laughs> and her fucking fly equals fly is not even the right way to do no, it. No, it's not correct. Ma'am. Ma'am, we've had ISIS on this plane. 
Also, I think the last thing she was saying is a bridesmaids reference, where she's like, "There's a colonial woman on the plane." I think that was like some okay, point in bridesmaids that. where she, she was must freaking have been out. High. She had to have been. Look at Doug. Doug's a beautiful oh, hair. Yeah, he does. Silver fox. Yeah, he is. Teach me how to Dougie. Ser- seriously, zero personal life. Zero personal life. He also, I mean, again. When he uh, grabbed the mic after the game and he's like, first of all, I got to give all the go- glory to the Lord and Savior. I was like, everybody on this team. People are people like God. Gail, okay, I know it comes as a shock to you. I know. It's just you live in surprising. Brooklyn. You know, I think that that's probably what it is. It's just like when you are in a different area and you're dealing with different kinds of people. I literally would be less shocked if somebody went like. Uh, you know, I was actually, uh, I'm trans. I was born a man. And exactly. You, and be like, oh, okay. But somebody's just like, I give all the, the glory to God. And you're like, wow. I That's did, odd. I did not know that about you. It's because you It's live- not a judgment. It's just like a, ooh, who knew it? You live in a bubble. I know. All right. A fucking. A bubble. Snowflake <laughs> bubble. <laughs> <laughs> a snow globe, really. A delightful snow globe called Brooklyn. Um, Hey, Steve. Steve, what's up? Hey, uh, don't the Benningtons have two big posses, uh, Vito and Chris? No, we have two big pussies, Vito and Chris. <laughs> <laughs> My eagle, uh, 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 uh. Mm, 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 yeah, mm, whenever mm. I go anywhere, I take Vito and Chris with me, and then they just act like they're texting the whole time, right. no matter who I'm talking to. Because the posse has to act like we're texting. Yeah, they're doing stuff. They yeah. look like... You're texting who? Yeah. Locking who? down some deals. Yeah, I don't know. Videographer. <laughs> oh, me, my man. I haven't seen you in forever. Ronnie, what's going on, baby? How's everything? Cool. Oh, check this out. So I just heard your story in regards to uh, how you was woken up. Don't feel so bad. I'm going to put Diana on blast on this. <laughs> one morning I knew one morning I knew she had a very important meeting she had to go to. Yeah. And I'm calling and calling and calling and she's not picking up and she's a deep sleeper. So I was like, Oh man, she can't miss this meeting. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? So I had to call our super. <laughs> so I, I called our super, I was like, Listen, George, you gotta do me a big favor. Diana needs to wake up and I'm not getting through to her, so I need you to go over there. And just bang on the door. Right, I think he scared the crap out of her because he was banging on that door. She finally got up, you know, and you know she woke up or whatever. She calls me and she was like, what, what, "What happened?" I was like, "Well, you know, you had to go to this meeting. You overslept, so I didn't know what to do other than get the super." Door. She was like, "Man, he scared the shit out of me." I, I know. I don't know how people go around being woken up by things. <laughs> Wake up on your own. That's the way the. The earth is supposed to be. That's the human condition. The weird thing is I set my alarm in the morning on the weekdays. I don't set it on the weekends, but I pretty much get it up at the exact same time. People get up at whatever yeah. time they get up. Yeah. That's it. Oh, but this is multiple. I, I mean, I saw she said she has an alarm that I set for her every time I leave. And yeah. that does nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. It's she hard to right see through that. Yeah, because she's drunk. <laughs> all right Sharon, now i just feel you know what i mean maybe i could put together a group or a posse of people that have had these embarrassing wake-ups yeah i, I mean, mean i'll talk to you later brother i miss you she actually slept through a fire that was going on oh my god oh no <laughs> there was a fire upstairs they had to come into they had to come down the fire escape bang on the window finally she got up you know, she's like, oh, my God, you know, it was a fire. So she calls me. I go from work. I go over there. Ron, I walked into that room. It made no sense how she was still sleeping. That room was baking, absolutely baking. You, it made no sense how she slept through that. You need to hire round-the-clock nursing for her. <laughs> you know what I mean? She cannot take care of herself. <laughs> she needs long, need long-term care already? Yes, already. Put her in there. Have some Jamaican woman. Just be with her all the time. I mean, I'll talk to you later, brother. Uh, see you soon, brother. I love you, kid. You guys. All right, let's jump into a break here. 
It's the Bennington Show. And Bennington Show. It's a Thursday night. I'll be at the stand tonight. What a show we had last night. A matter of fact, uh, a friend of ours was running their Tonight Show set because they're going to be on the Tonight Show. Really? Tonight setting up. Who's that? Uh... The great Bonnie McFarland. Woo! Yeah. The guy from the... Uh, oh, remind, remind me off the air to tell you about the behavior of a different comedian, though. Okay. But it's for be off... It's only for off the air. Male? But, uh, always. <laughs> um, Michael, the guy from The Tonight Show, he comes in from L.A., and then they run the set you know, over and over and just try to tweak it. Mm -hmm. And it's always a fun thing to see. Yeah, I really like, I I really like catching that when anyone's at the stand working out. Uh, Because it's a very different thing that you're witnessing. You gotta take the fucks out. Yeah, there's, it's less fucky, less cunty. And yet, I'll be in there and I'll just put my head in and I'm like, I think it works better with the fucks. (laughs) I really do. Tell them if they want to bleep it, then they have to do it. There is the big boss, Jack. And uh, he calls Chris Stanley Batman uh, stash because Chris's thing looks like the Bat logo. Oh, it does actually. Yeah, it does. Good luck. Kind of. Oh, definitely. Something happens. Kind of like a cop. Head over heels. Definitely not a cop. He looked copier. Every co- cops do wear mustaches. Yeah. That is true. That's why you n- I never would sell coke to anyone who has a mustache. <laughs> do, 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 do. I'm just lo- that song's locked in my head today. It's so weird because I was listening to it just a couple of days ago and I love that song. Mm-hmm. Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding you. I love everything by uh, um TFF. Me too. That's what I call him. TFF is kind of a cool name. For TFF him. is so underrated. Yeah. Some people call that titty fuck and then they say a, a, a slur, a homophobic slur. I got to get over and find this uh, story. This is, you know, normally a comedy story is a uh, happy one. Oh, I'm just going to make this thing. I think they're going to love Bunny. And. She told me, you know what, I shouldn't even give out this story, but she was supposed to run stuff the other night, but Rich had things to do. Really? Easily cancelable things. I'm going to have a little talk with him, okay? Yeah, he needs to get us together. Well, the whole thing about marriage, which works, is compromise, right? Right, yeah. So no one gets what they want. Supporting each other, mm-hmm. giving a little bit too much of yourself. That's why I say to the guys, look, there's five of us on this show, right? Five fingers. You just see the way fingers flop around. Yeah. But pull them in and make a fist. Mm-hmm. And we could punch any woman in the face. What? Wait. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Swear that you specified woman. That's because I don't I'm kind of woke, and I feel like anybody could be punched. I guess that's good. And I fight to win, and I have a better (laughs) chance of fighting a woman than I do a man. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. That's another recommendation. Be careful out there fighting a men punch back, or women tend to hurt. Um. All right, I want to see if we can get some help here. There's a uh, story on the iBang about the great comedian Rick Shapiro. And everybody knows Rick from his stand-up and the stuff that he did on Lucky Louie Mm -hmm. and then Mark Maron. And he has Parkinson's, and he has somehow fallen into the system where they come in because there's a whole thing about agitation and sometimes you're acting out. When you have Parkinson's, I imagine, because you can't always express yourself. So he's been kind of nabbed, and they won't let his wife see him. And the last time she saw him, he was in a very bad state. Um, So go over to theibank.com if you're somebody who knows the system, or if you're somebody who cares, because maybe, you know, some emails to certain people 
enough of them can get going. Wow. Um, but, you know, uh, I, I'm just a gigantic admirer of uh, Rick's and his uh, wife, uh, Tracy, we've known for years, and she's just the sweetest person. So um, I don't know all about these things. I don't know a lot about it, but I know she's uh, asking uh, for for help. But um, you know, if you see the if you see this article, and you know, kind of know how the system works, um, or if you could just pass this along to any press outlet that you know, because she put this up on her Facebook and she's asking for press help. So if you could get them and and just, you know, send it around and stuff like that. But it's a scary situation. Yeah. <clears throat> and, um, you know, I just always, it's always sad for me to see something because Rick was always such kind of a tough street guy mm -hmm. his whole life. He was the real deal. And to see him in this place where he can't even kind of, defend himself and I, and by the way i don't know what they're doing for him or not doing for him but i guess there's a certain time when you know the state steps in i guess i don't yeah. know please if you can be at any help at all uh anybody who ever saw mark Marin's show uh he played a a really hilarious part. And there was all, all his acting is always kind of Rick Shapiro, whatever you look at. <laughs> uh, but his stand up is just, uh, you know, it's legendary. So please, if you can help, go over the iBank, uh, tweet it out to people. Yeah. You know, whatever you can do to get the word out. If you know anybody in any amount of the press or anybody in the legal system, see if you can help out. Um, it's much, much uh, appreciated. All right, this is the Bennington Show on a, uh, I don't know what day that we're uh, looking at here. Thursday. Oh, okay, this is Thursday. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow is the big Friday show. And uh, um, we put up Chris's uh, Big Dick Nick anyway. That's weird. Um, and I brought this up. Uh, up uh earlier today but about hope hicks uh, boyfriend being out at the white house and it's another one of those things that i guess this shit happened years ago but again you can never work again now yeah like this pay the people not... some money something you know i get it but how do people not work anymore <laughs> yeah i mean i guess particularly now any Anything that was is going to bring negative press, whether that thing is in your past, any organization, corporation, uh, entity of any kind is going to distance themselves from, from it's, it's, people. Whether you were convicted or not, that's what fucking gets to me. Yeah. We no longer have this court system set up. Mm. All these people that we see that are out have not had their day in court. Well, there's definitely a thing of like everyone's going on this oh, well, there's smoke, there's fire kind of mentality that, you know, if Look, somebody if somebody has brought this attention to the person, then we have to be reactionary to it. This is what we used to do with gay teachers. This is the fucking weirdness of just because you're on the side of something doesn't mean that you don't want process to happen. And Chris smokes, and I've never seen a fire around them. Mm -hmm. Where there's smoke, there's really a guy just slagging off, you know? <laughs> He's enjoying a cigarette. You enjoying a cigarette, or are you enjoying not working? <laughs> now, today I came up, Chris is sitting at his table relaxing, right? Mm -hmm. But he sees me, and he gets up, and he starts pacing. I think he now thinks that I think that when he's pacing, he's working. <laughs> oh, and I go, dude, God. I saw you sitting there enjoying yourself, staring at your phone. Don't act like you're pacing. <laughs> I'm gonna get one I of those. didn't know that the pacing might be a, a bit of an act. I always thought oh, that yeah, was the from... pacing is an act. I've been a pacer I'm... since way back. I'm going to get a Nest camera and I'll find out whether you're pacing or sitting. <laughs> I'll tell you, what, I don't have to wor worry about working. It's Vitz. Yeah. I mean, he is leaving a paper trail of work. Look at what? him. A little baby that when he he turns around and hears you saying his name, he had a slow turn and then a smile like yeah. 
Daddy likes me. That's right. Daddy likes you today. <laughs> He's a little Look kid. At Look at the photo of your art museum. That's awesome. Ba-da-ba. That's the uh, world famous Rocky Steps. Still not getting any uh, signal, I don't think. Well, you know why? Because there's fucking three million people with yeah. their cell phones on. But he should be right somewhere in that crowd right there at the art museum. Maybe he'll run up the steps. I hope he they does. They should let all the people run up at the same I time. I know, that would be great. <laughs> I hope Kevin Hart gets a chance to get a good seat, not like they treat him <laughs> in the Super Bowl. <laughs> and let me tell you what. You know why they didn't let Kevin Hart up there? Why? Does anybody know? No. Mm-hmm. Anybody have an idea at the top of their head? Um, just like because he wasn't on the team? or He's black. Oh, <laughs> oh God. no. And racism in 2018, it might as well be 1861. There's no difference. You know, you still have black people in chains. In this case, the chain is not letting them go up and be with the team, the team that they root for. (laughs) Everybody else was up there. (laughs) Foles is up there. Sure. Like he doesn't have a fucking problem in the world. Again, he is on the team. He is the team. Without Foles, you have nothing. Mm -mm. Carson Wentz. What a fucking weak need nobody. <laughs> Ginger. Yeah. He is, he is a keynote speaker, hey, Can I tell though? you something? Ginger is the racism against white people. Mm. That's too white. Oh, look, they're swooping. They're swoop. swooping. There it is. <laughs> Doing his signature dance. The swoop looks like he's in a gorilla <laughs> costume until you get to the head. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I I could never do that because I don't want to pantomime all day. Like, there's the whole place laid out. Holy shit. What's that, 94? I think I see him. (laughs) Aw, look at that little eagle baby. Yeah. That baby doesn't have any idea why he's stuck there with everybody else. (laughs) Oh, number nine? I just want to be home. Well, that's what we should have been doing during during the game. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Athletes always have hot checks, right? They do. Yeah. yeah. Must be something about the money. It could be the money. Could be the uh, physique. Yeah, that's part of it. But that don't last. Neither one of them lasts when you really yeah. think about it. Especially if you're looking for knee strength in a man. Uh uh-uh. uh And I am. Honey, I can't go down on you. My knee's killing me. <laughs> Oh my that's god, this is saying. not the man I married. <laughs> Wentz won't do that anyway, because that's where the devil is. Oh yeah. The woman's vagina. Yeah, that's true. Do 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 you think he I mean he's very Christian. You think yeah. he's premarital sex guy or no? Uh, uh, I don't think so. Do you think he's a virgin? I think he's a virgin. Or like a reclaimed <laughs> Christian where they say like I'll say reclaimed at best. Okay. But you think currently would not have premarital sex. Because he just, I think he just got engaged yesterday. Yeah. They put it on Twitter. Um, Probably because he wants to Seattle have to sleep would, with her. Wouldn't bang his fucking chick until they got married? Oh, yeah. And the, then, um, didn't they get pregnant immediately? I think so, yeah. Russell Wilson and Sierra? No. Here's the thing. I thought he was fucking playing with the Yanks. What positions? He looks like a shortstop. I think he's a pitcher. He was a pitching prospect. There's at, no uh, way you're going to come in at this fucking point in your career and pitch. <laughs> Not going to happen, man. Not going to fucking happen. That's like saying, oh, I'm going to come in now and be a gymnast. You know what I mean? It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> Plus, no one is really his height and a pitcher anymore. Pitchers are like fucking ropes. They're like a whip that you just snap. <laughs> like a mean... Fucking whip. I would say out of every sport, the meanest people are pitchers. You think so? Easily. They are fucking terrible people. Well, what you told me about, like, intentionally. They all intentionally hit people. Hit, hitting people. I mean, that's that's pretty cruel. Imagine this. Somebody hits two home runs, so you fucking hit them with a fucking, basically a, <laughs> a big, <laughs> thick, thick bullet. Not even the same guy. It's just like someone else on the team Let did the it. fucking like, team know. I'm not fucking giving up home runs all day. <laughs> now, that would be... It, it's not like they stole those home runs. Their job is to swing and hit the ball as far as they can. Right. That's their job. That's like saying you're doing your job. 
<laughs> it's like if I pull up at a gas station and the fucking guy fills my tank up, checks the oil, and then I turn around and shoot him in the kneecap. <laughs> go, That's for fucking doing your job, prick. <laughs> no, I don't want the money. I just want to point out to you. <laughs> what do you think this is for the Eagles? Is it the first win in five straight Super Bowl wins or is it the first in seven Super Bowl wins? You know, before you just said that, I had been thinking five this whole time. Yeah. But seven sounds more appropriate. Yeah. Because that way they can fucking pass Pittsburgh. <laughs> <laughs> the way we're going, and if just, the Steelers don't win anymore, it's just another 50 or 60 years. <laughs> How many in a row you think they're going to win, you know? Five or seven? I'm going to go lucky number seven. Chris? Seven. Now you guys are supposedly fucking fans of the New York team, right? Yeah, I'm a Giants fan. Now you guys are both New York fans, but not fans of the same team. No. Jets. Jets are garbage. Is there anything you do like about the Jets, Chris? Zero. Nothing. Nothing whatsoever. Vito, is there anything that you like about the Giants? Love that commercial they did during the <laughs> Super Bowl. That wasn't a commercial. Somebody had just left the camera there and caught them as they naturally act. Next season looks good, then. Do, 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 do. Uh, John in Milwaukee. John. Ben Kings, how's yeah. everybody doing? Good. Uh, I just want to add on to you were just talking about how pitchers, you know, they're just mean now. Um, so I live in Milwaukee, but I'm a diehard Cubs fan, grew up in Chicago, and so we get to actually hang out with some of the players at the local bars when the uh, Cubbies come into town, primarily the pitchers that are going to have nothing to do for the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last time around, Arietta and uh, Junior came in, and uh, we were talking about who was starting pitching the next day, and it was supposed to be last. And they're all just like, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but Lackey's going to fucking kill somebody because he is just angry. He just gets up there and just whips the ball as hard as he can if it hits somebody. He eh, doesn't lose his, uh, you know, a second of sleep over it. The, the guys in their own team don't even really like the pitchers or have anything to do with them, you know? Because they've had to bat <laughs> off them before in practice. And it's fucking terrible. These are well, the worst. If they're, yeah. if they've been traded and now they're playing for a team that they used to hit those players. It's like, yeah, I don't want to talk to you. Yeah, nobody wants to be around them. If we could somehow just add a pitching robot, I think everybody would be happier. <laughs> Pitchers are mean people. Every single one of them. There is no such thing in a, a kind pitcher. Now, do they take. Uh, a role similar to a quarterback in that they're like a head of that team? Nope. They're in their own world. They're in their own world. They don't talk to the other guys. Right. They don't know them. If they were saying, and I don't even want to say which picture it is because what I'm saying is inside information, but a guy brought his kid to the park and the pitcher threw at him, threw at the kid. Oh, my God. Because they're mean. And he's like, don't ever fucking bring that kid. I'll put this thing right up his ass. It was a three-year-old. Oh, my oh. God. He was hit in the head. <gasps> no. Yeah. They could kill. It did. <laughs> Why didn't, didn't you lead with that? You didn't Why want... didn't you lead with that he murdered a three-year-old? Well, I wanted to, you know, I'm trying to not get involved. In this. this is from a major <laughs> league team. Now, here's the thing. The father, of course, was so mad. But they were in a pennant run, and he did not want to fuck it up, so they buried the baby right there <laughs> oh, on the field. This is horrible. I can't believe you know all this inf information. I'm not saying in the field, Chris. <laughs> Bullpen. And oh guess what? I know somebody who was there, yeah. and when they were, and this is sad when you have to bury a baby. I mean, it's of always course. sad. Yeah. Yeah. But he's digging a hole, right? He's doing it fast. There was a lot other babies. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. This wasn't even his first. Yeah. A lot of those kids were Hispanic, though. I guess there's a lot of Hispanics playing these days. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Speaking of uh, Hispanics, Luis J. Gomez last night. Running that fucking mean show that he has. Mm, mean spirited. Mean spirited. That thing should only be that roast battle. 
Only pitchers should be doing that. <laughs> and they're in some kind of tournament right now. And they're all, uh, they're all really vicious with each other. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. A lot of Eagles fans. A lot yes. of Eagles fans hanging out. Look I'm, Doug. I'm hearing that uh, it's too loud there. Otherwise, he would give a call because the music uh, is blaring. But he said there's some <laughs> happily throwing of firecrackers and beer firecrackers and beer cans. <laughs> They're having a good time. But the mass but media won't report that. Will no, they? they won't. We've limited to nothing but firecrackers and beer cans. Hey, Mike. Mike, what's up? Hey, yeah, you know, we've been going through the the whole sexual scandal thing in Canada, just like you guys. We, we follow everything you guys do, but it's it's been taken off like crazy, and a lot of it's been political people, mainly political uh, figures. But last week there was a guy, uh, he's like a political talk show host. He does a, a political show really well known for a long time and he's pretty much been the first one that's been accused uh that hasn't been fired they 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 stood by him and said you know we're not doing anything to this guy till it's been proven that he's done something incorrectly because they just it, it's been happening so frequently i think he, finally people are starting to stand up and go well we got to start looking at some of these before we just fire everybody look let me tell you something you if you fire people for rape in canada Forget about it. That that country is not going to move. <laughs> Raping and flirting in Canada is the same thing. I did not know this. Yeah, and like yeah, but in Canada, rape or you can con- or whistling at a chick on the street is constituted as rape now. Like rape, rape is yeah, very, they're very politically mm-hmm. correct in Canada. Yeah, very, very, very polite. Mental yeah. in Canada. Well, yeah, they're very polite. Unless you're a rapist, they're, they're not very polite to you anymore. Then your prime minister even want to change something that had man in it. No, you know what? Uh, you know what? It's it's really funny because they cleared. They talked about that again last night on the news, and and I'm not a, a really big fan of his. But you know what? It, what what it is is everybody's so used to him being a real kind of pussy, really touchy feely feminist. He he came out and said that he was really just joking, and I tend to believe him. He was he was kind of just making light of the fact that he is known as being a real That's pussy. Really funny though. That, so he, 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 you know what? I mean? that the people kind, <laughs> kind of. A, He's kind of aware of the fact that, yeah. that, that, that he's a feminist, and, and he was kind of making a joke saying, no, we're going to call it people kind instead of mankind. <laughs> but everybody jumped on it because they're used to him being that way. I love the Canadian news, though, anytime I'm up there. <laughs> I love news that, frankly, doesn't have anything to do with me. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's only what has to do with me that it's annoying. <laughs> but I could sit and watch uh, news in Canada endlessly. <laughs> endlessly. Yeah. Thanks, Bim. There's a weird thing about me. I've always felt like more like a Canadian than an American. Really? Isn't that odd? I wonder why. I don't know. I don't think I like to belong to the... the I don't like to belong to anything, really. Yeah. And with Canada, it's like saying, well, we're only together because we're not you. <laughs> you know? I think I would have been a better outsider than an insider in America. That's interesting. Plus, they're like... You know, their border doesn't seem that, like, serious. Mm-mm. You know, it's they like, where care. does Canada even end? I don't even know. What do you mean the top of Canada? Yeah. <laughs> Just go, breaks off into nothingness. Just into the ice the, chunks, I think. I, I thought you meant the bottom, because the bottom used to be pretty lax when I was younger, going back and forth to Canada. Not now. Yeah. The first time I ever went to Montreal, I just used a driver's license. I think that's all I, I used. didn't use anything. Just drove through. Yeah, just went up and said, hey, you know, we're going into Canada. <laughs> now, going both ways is a big deal. I'm like, yeah. should I jot down where I'm going to be staying? You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't always know where I'm going to be staying. <laughs> you can't even go up there anymore and be like, I don't know. I'm going to look around for a hotel. You got to have reservations. Mm-hmm. And like, did you bring anything into the country? Bring all kinds of shit in the country. I don't want you to know about. <laughs> That's my business. Trying to keep on a DL as much as I can. How about that weird little uh, island that the BBC did that thing off the coast of the eastern shore of Virginia? I know, that's so peculiar. And they, because it's a small, and there's always small islands like that, they still have somewhat of a British accent. Yeah, 
And it's kind of like an old school British accent, too. Like colonial. I, yeah. It's really, really weird. Well, I had heard before that when the Brits, when the English, the Redcoats, had closer what we would consider a southern accent, like a Virginia or Georgia accent, more than what we think Brits sound like today. Yeah, I'd read that before. That's really Who knows if that's true? Now, I like that is really strange. Like whoever settles in that area, that's where the accents of the U.S. come from, because it's a kind of watered down version of wherever those people are from. And I have a friend who's from Pittsburgh or her family's from Pittsburgh and she was doing like a pit, a Pittsburgh accent mm -hmm. and another friend who's Scottish. And he's like, it's kind of weird. Like half of the words that you just pronounce are kind of like the way Scottish people pronounce that same word. And she's like, there's a lot of Scottish people in Pittsburgh. Like that's like maybe that has something to do with it where you're like they they settled there. Then just your weird accent becomes like a Scottish American kind of yeah, swirled up you know, thing. Here's the main what's always interesting is where is why don't African Americans in Boston or Philly sound like African Americans? They just sound like African American accent. They don't sound like a Boston or Philly. Yeah. And in the South, there is definitely a slowed down accent, but yeah. it isn't exactly Southern. Yeah, like, that's because, uh, it is weird, there's two accents for, like, black people in this country, and it's, like, urban and country, and it's not quite southern the way white people sound right. southern, and the urban accents are not a New York accent or a Philly accent, but it's their own version, right. but it doesn't seem like it has, there just seems to be those two. Now, here's the deal. See a black guy from England, fucking sounds like an English dude. Totally, 100%. Why don't they have their own fucking scene? I don't know. And I saw a black guy from Africa, and he was fucking clicking and shit. I mean, <laughs> he did not <laughs> seem like... And black guys from Jamaica, they don't sound English. You know what I mean? Right. They got the Jamaican accent. But do the white people don't in, in Jamaica don't talk that way? No. You never see don't. a white guy like, come on, man. They sound more like British people to me. Yes, they do. Now, why do Aussies sound more British than we do? And Canadians don't sound British until you get up into the Maritimes, right? Yeah. Then they have a closer British sound than what we consider the Canadian accent. Yeah, but that is weird that Australians sound more similar accent to English, even though... You can make the mistake with an Australian sometime and go, oh, yeah. you're English. I'm like, what are you fucking talking about? <laughs> On the other side of the world. <laughs> That's what I don't get. Yeah. And that that accent is totally peculiar, but it is like English inspired. But then we're like, well, why don't we still have the remnants of that? Or why don't the Canadians who stayed with England long after we did? Yeah. Canadians, to me, sound nothing like fucking Brits. No. Yet they love British culture. No. fucking crazy about but it. But they have their own weird scene. Like, their accent is like... Well, it's Canadian. Yeah, but I mean, like, that also has has to have influence somewhere else, too. Like, isn't there, like, some sort of, like, I don't know, Swedish or something? Like, isn't there... Maybe, a, because they kind of sound... Minnesotans kind of sound like that, you know? Yeah. Minnesota fucking people just sound like, take my wallet to me. <laughs> You know what I mean? Please. They're just them in Wisconsin. <laughs> Pete Lee is from Wisconsin. And he's just like, he thinks every, he's so nice. Mm -hmm. and he's everything good. But you can see him looking down on everybody else. That's not nice. That's the whitest of the white when you do that. Like, we're so nice. Not like the other people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they're like church ladies. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> they're like saying that they're good. But their whole fucking vibe gets off of. We're good. Not like you people. Not like you gutter fucking horse. <laughs> and let me just say this. The fact that you fuck in a gutter and take money for it <laughs> does not make you a gutter whore. Okay? <laughs> and then the California accent, right? Most of the time we think of it as a valley accent, but 
That isn't the way everybody in California talks. But why do the people in the Valley talk that way? I don't know. It's and kind why? of surf, and they couldn't be further away from the surf when you're in the Valley. Yeah. But then where does that weird California, For like, sure. like that hard, yeah, sure. like, like kind of over enunciating things. It's really yeah. weird. To me, California people are like the coldest of the cold. Yeah. Like they're the people that could drive past a dead body on their way to a fucking afternoon party. You yeah, know, there's something about West Coasters. They're just not emotional enough for me. They're like as they, a New Yorker, yeah. as an East Coaster, we have a lot of emotions. We get angry pretty easy. We're like we get stressed out. I don't really. It's hard for me to relate to people who are like, hmm, whatevs. Hey, I'm just She's chilling. Having a meltdown right now. I'm just chilling. <laughs> hey, uh, Peter. Yeah. Hey, what's, what's up, Ron? Hey. Hey, I was going to see if you can guess where I'm from with my accent. Well, you sound Midwest to me. Am I yeah. right about that? No, not really. Um, I'm a white guy from South Africa. Is that oh. right? Yeah. And uh, well, I was going to say, I've been in the States for a while, but everybody I talk to, they, like, I've been Canadian, Russian. I've only had, like, one or two guys that could ever guess South Africa. Yeah, well, that's because, you know, I mean, I can tell that you have, it sounds like blood, like murderous blood <laughs> in that accent, like you're holding an entire amount of people down <laughs> and not making sure. Um, but so, yeah, so South Africa, there's a Dutch background, right? That's it. Most, most of it is Dutch. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Influence as well, but yeah, most, yeah I'd say about 80% of the whites are. A Dutchman. All right. That's very, very cool. Thanks so much for that. Hey. Yeah, that's a unique Thanks, one. Buddy. Yeah. And Thanks, man. Yeah. And one that, like, we have very little exposure to here. Well, it's not more than we used to. The more people go there now, and it's a beautiful country. Mm -hmm. And unbelievable surf takes place. And seven out of every ten surfers is killed by a great white shark. Oh, Seems like it's not worth it. Slaughter. Oh, it's great surf, though. I mean, it's really fucking glassy. You but know, you're hot. Beautiful you're hot. tubes. <laughs> yeah. You just surf right into a fucking great wife. So <laughs> there's a oh, great wife, uh, white shark that's around the Everglades right now. Yeah. Stalking the Everglades. That it's one that they have the tracker on. Yeah. I mean, that's obviously like a, a Jaws reboot <laughs> they it's just terrible they had a great weight down there a couple years ago and they cut him open and inside of it was a crocodile they cut that crocodile open there was an alligator inside of that what? so it's like the traducan mm. of the evergreen mm. blades <laughs> um hey uh let's go over here to holly hey what's up holly Hey, guys. Hey. As a uh, former Ginzer, I haven't lived in Pittsburgh in like 10 years, more yeah. than that, but I still have a horrible accent. I can never get rid of it. But it was from the Scots and the Irish. When they immigrated to America, a lot of them came to the Pittsburgh area, and they wanted to learn how to speak English, and so they just kind of made up their own words and stuff. So that's why we say, you know, I got to go right up my room or stop being so nebby. But, but, time. but you know the the amount of Irish that came into New York City, there was more Ir Irish in New yeah. York City than in Ireland. And why does that sound so different than than Pittsburgh? Yeah, it's totally different. And Pittsburgh well, does is like the urban. Midwest accent. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, in Pittsburgh, too, a lot of, like, it, I don't know if you've ever been there, every yeah. suburb around the city is a different nationality. Right. So, like, there's one suburb and it's all Italian. There's another one it's all Greek. There's another one it's all the Hasidic Jews. And he heavily Texas Polish, called, too, right? Yeah. They have a, actually, their town is called Polish Hill. Yeah. So that's what, you know, and the Czechoslovakians, they all have their little sections around there. So I guess it was just kind of like everybody got together and got to learn to talk to each other. So they just made up words. But um, I it's still get strange how that happens. Right? Yeah. Time. Thanks so much. Hal. Anyways, that's my history. <laughs> it's a good one. It's a good one. And now you're taking it to St. Pete. That's the odd thing about it. JT, what's up? 
Hey, brother. Hey. You think about it, the California accent, kind of the lack of emotion. Think about how California grew and all those people who want to be actors big time and maybe their that personality trait. Yeah, kind of- it, uh, like, believe it or not, acting is not a very big profession in the state of California. The people that were That's out there oh. were, you know, farmers, ranchers, uh, miners, uh, oil people. You know what I mean? It was a real hard living for a long time. Fishermen. Right. You know what I mean? And Hollywood was just this tiny little thing. That's also like another thing. Their beach culture is that same kind of cold beach culture. Yeah. Unlike like in the Northeast or just on the East Coast in general, like it just has still something like cold and aloof about it. And I think it's just their cold water. Well, the Pacific is way colder it's than freezing. the Atlantic. Yeah. yeah. But you're almost at the end where people swim into the ocean. You know what I mean? When you get up in New England, that water gets cold as fuck. Yeah. You know? So you're basically looking from, I don't know, I say, I'm going to give it like, uh, like, you see people in Cape Cod, they're wearing fucking sweatshirts and shit. They are, yeah. And that's yeah. where that whole sweater around the neck yeah. thing comes from. Because they never knew when they were going to need a goddamn sweater. They weren't <laughs> trying to look preppy. All right, let's uh, take a break here. Are you just coming at me with the live reads, huh, Chris? Well, live reads. Is this the end of it? Oh, this will be the end of it after the next one. So it's not the end of it. <laughs> You should work in a hospital with shit like that. <laughs> this will be the, your last shot until the next shot. <laughs> There's something else, Chris Stanley. Luckily for you, I'd love to talk about this. Uh, it's HelloFresh. Well, I'm going to just ask you to do this. Next time you go into the grocery store, pay attention to how long it takes. Actually, don't waste your time. I'm going to tell you right now. It takes too long. It's 2018, folks. The days of going to the grocery store, battling for a parking space, searching high and low for some obscure ingredient, they're over. It's time to say hello to HelloFresh, the meal kit delivery service that makes cooking healthy, delicious meals fun, easy, and convenient. Just go to HelloFresh.com, pick out the recipes you want, and they're delivered directly to your doorstep. They come every week in a special insulated box, along with easy-to-follow step-by-step instructions and full-color pictures. Each HelloFresh box includes fresh seasonal ingredients that are perfectly portioned no wondering if you have the right amount no waste just delicious meals that you can make in 30 minutes or less and for a limited time you can go you can get 30 dollars off your first box when you go to hellofresh.com slash raw plus Free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash raw for $30 off. HelloFresh.com slash raw. Welcome back to Bennington. Vic Henley's in studio. Yeah, man. Vic's performing all over New York City uh, next month and then in, uh, this month. And then on March 9th and 10th, we'll be in Stanford, Connecticut and Westbury, New York with Ron White, tatersalad.com for tickets. And you can see Vic at Comedy Off Broadway in Lexington, Kentucky, March 28th to the 31st, comedyoffbroadway.com for tickets. Yes, they made a mistake of booking me Final Four weekend in Kentucky. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. I just decided to jump on the uh, Villanova bandwagon last night. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Why do I pick tonight? <laughs> it's still early. You're yeah, it's still you're, early. You're technically still early. Yeah. And uh, I don't know the last time my Auburn Tigers were ranked ahead of the Kentucky Wildcats in basketball. Yeah. Probably 80, with Barkley, probably 83. Right. It's been forever. But Barkley as a college player was crazy. There, well, when I was there, and I know him pretty good. Yeah. You know, but we, there were just, there were a hundred different stories about people seeing him at like two and three o'clock in the morning carrying food. Somewhere. Yeah, yeah. There was just these, you know, I saw him over yeah. here. Crystal is the white castle of the little square right. burger. So I saw him going, it was two thirty in the morning. He was running across the quad with 38 <laughs> crystals. I saw him coming out of Krispy Kreme with two yeah. dozen. I saw him coming out of Godfather's Pizza with, you know, yeah, it was just, he was notorious for well, roaming, when, and, roaming he, and eating. When he, 
was, you know, a pro. People <laughs> teased him about being overweight, but he was ripped compared to what he was in college. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. Bobby Knight kicked him off the league. He yeah. didn't make the Chuck Person, who's in yeah. timeout right now for the scandals of college basketball right. uh, at Auburn. Uh, he made the Olympic team, and, and uh, Bobby Knight told Barkley, if you show up over 275, 280, <laughs> you're not making it. And Barkley yeah. showed up like 305. <laughs> and Bobby Knight sent him home. Yeah. And I watched the two of them. Chuck Person gave him shit about that for the next year. That's you know, hilarious. because like, well, yeah, who got a gold medal and who's a dick? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's in a very good nature at Auburn living. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Well, we've got the uh, the parade on right now, and daytime Philadelphia is, you know, it's more peaceful yeah. than nighttime <laughs> Philadelphia. <Yeah. laughs> a little more family oriented today. It's literally like night and day. Yeah, it is. It is <laughs> it like, night and, is like night and day. Now, did you enjoy the game this year? Or? I thought it was awesome. Uh, yeah. I, I was just watching it with a. I almost got up because I walked into the party with these people that I didn't know, and uh, and the first thing this one dude says, "Who you like?" and I'm like, "I don't care really," and yeah. I like Brady, even though everybody hates him. And the, yeah. the fact that Nick Foles said that he was going to go to the seminary during his right. time out of football, then, then I wanted to go more devil, and more <laughs> yeah. evil. Then I'm really I'm Sauron, I'm Hades. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm not going. With, keep my keep my Jesus out of football. There is uh, <laughs> well Carson Wentz is even more. Jesus. He's way super. Yeah. No, it's, yeah, I knew he, that yeah. already, and I already yeah. didn't like him for that. Yeah. I can't, stand, I can't yeah. stand my Jesus in my football. Yeah. Well, uh, there was a thing of the Eagles. They were uh, they had uh, baptized one of them in a hotel pool. Yeah, they had oh, all uh, oh. <laughs> just before a game. That's Philly. That's very yeah. Philly. Yeah. That's, that's, I kind of don't like that and like that. At the same time. That's infringing on my Jesus in football, but you do it in, a, in like a Super 8. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> and, well, in Cherry Hill, just across. That is the thing that's funny about any pro team is they have zero connection oh. to the city and a lot of these guys are 22 they uh, they're not the same as a 50 year old guy who's been watching this team you know what i mean that guy cares a Certainly. lot more a Absolutely. lot yeah. more you know no i'm with you that's yeah it's, yeah, it's you know but I, I went in this party and this guy said uh who do you like and i'm i just want a good game and, and i go who do you like and he said uh, i quit watching this when they started needling yeah. I'm like, now, dude, now you want me to want to leave the fucking party. Right. And you were now, I go, did you ever have a team? And right. He, and he goes, well, I'm, I live in Cleveland. I, don't, I go, okay, that's the reason you say you gave up on football. Right. It's because yeah, you live in Cleveland. <laughs> yeah. You don't say because the kneeling protesting. Right. That you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Because I don't, I don't know how many millions of times they said, we're not putting our dick in the flag. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's not yeah. that. <laughs> we're not jacking off on the Statue of Liberty. It's fucking the black man can't get a break, is what we're trying to say. Yeah. And they only said it about 900 fucking million times. Yeah. So after I give him my reason, 900 million times, then you're a cock for not coming to my party because I want you to wear a hat. <laughs> so, anyway. It is true. I mean, it's a it's a second and it's just the same game as always. But it was a fun game. I loved it was it. an exciting yeah. game. It was wonderful. And it's I agree a lot with, of good stories. I agree with you with Brady. This thing, because I saw that it was only something like 16% of the country won it. The Patriots yeah, went out. Yeah, like, yeah, eighty four. Yeah, they can't. They turned into the Yankees. He, yeah. What more does this guy got to give you? He's the Too best good. we've ever seen. Well, they don't like him because he has avocado milkshakes. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to live with him. Just watch no. him play. Yeah, but look yeah. at how much water he drinks. Yeah. I drink tons of water. <laughs> Are you against water? <laughs> yeah. No, Brady said he like drinks what thirty six thirty six glasses, glasses of a water day. day. So the ten, he's tripling three point <laughs> yeah. six. He's yeah. on three point six. He's, he had, they actually said if you did his thing, you would drown. You would drown yourself. <laughs> there is, there, you can go. There yeah. is no. There's a, there's a point when it doesn't go cross over the edge. I know too many people have tried to beat a drug test. <laughs> uh, no, we just have as much water as they can. Yeah. Yes, and there, yeah. it gets to a point where you can actually. Kill yourself via H2O. What was that? There was a name for something that everybody was like Golden Seal or something. Golden Seal. Yeah. yeah but, and I don't know if it ever worked. I think we used to sell it at NEW as, hey, if you got a weed test coming up. This will give you clean piss. I've heard yeah. about yeah. that. Yeah, it was yeah. Golden, Golden Seal. Seal. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You know, vinegar. There are all kinds of yeah. cranberry drink a, juice. Drink a quarter vinegar. All because they don't want somebody who smokes weed. 
right. to yeah. work. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's the strangest right. thing ever. What job could you? Maybe yeah. a pilot. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, and I, I can see how it could be a little annoying. Crane but, uh, operator. <laughs> Since we Crane operator. Since yeah. we live in New York, we yeah. have some incidents. Staten, file, St- yeah. Staten Island ferry yeah. pilot. Right. <laughs> but I, you know, when I got, uh, there was a thing of one of the radio companies was doing something like this. And I'm like, Bro, I couldn't even get into radio <laughs> if I didn't fucking get high with the record guys that were coming in. Mandatory. Yes. How would we know what music to play exactly. until we snorted as much right. coke as we could? How am I going to tolerate Toad the Wet Sprocket? Exactly. <laughs> Without a couple of bumps and a joint. Yeah. You're fucking high enough. You're like, so he's walking on the ocean. That's it. That's what Toad is doing here. He's literally yeah. walking yeah. on the ocean. <laughs> Woo! That's what they would They would always have coke and then take you to a nice steak place. You're like, we should have did the coke after. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean, what are we doing? No. Just a big that, raw steak and you're all That steak is bringing up. you down. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, it's fucking, it's, it's like putting an anchor on. <laughs> oh, yeah, it doesn't fit. One uh, is, of these things is not like the other. Is Doug Peterson wearing a turtleneck? I don't understand this. He look. does have a he does have a high. No, it's a neck. sweater. It's, yeah. a, it's a sweater okay. with, with a semi Henley collar. <laughs> True. My niece gave me one of these for Christmas. Is I that right? I, yeah, it's a little bit of a zip up. It kind of he might have on a turtleneck underneath it. Yeah. And what's he wearing around his neck here? That's the that's the, that's the that's sweater. The, yeah, yeah, the collar that goes and up. The collar only goes yeah. about halfway up. It's the Henley collar. You know, a, nothing is duller <laughs> than a parade. You'd think there would be a more exciting way to end the year and celebrate more than rolling buses down the street. <laughs> Fire trucks. Yeah, and then hearing a speech. There don't look like there many people there. Well, it's the, like the, the Trump inauguration. Yeah, it is. They're gonna they're gonna change Show the, the other numbers. angle. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there. Okay, there are people there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now I see this angle. <laughs> Once we go to the Fox News, <laughs> I go to the Fox News feed. It seems like there's way more people there <laughs> than over on this angle from ESPN. Now, do you follow politics? You've seen uh, Hope Hicks's boyfriend thing today this in the no i have I, I've, I've been on i was gone yeah. and i flew in late yesterday well, and i slept late this morning hope so. hope hicks is my favorite person in the trump administration okay bar none she's very hot and she's young and she's just thrown into this thing and her boyfriend i forget what his job was did they say chris he's the pre like a press I can't. white house staff secretary staff secretary okay so he's the guy who b- delivers the news to the president yes and apparently he beat up his last two ex-wives so they yeah. had to get rid of him choked and punched yeah. and like he choked said and punched. choked yeah. and punched yeah, yeah. combo so, platter yeah. he also said it didn't happen recently right so there you go he's changed but one of them he's was on tv now. today right and said that she was married to him long after so they were having an argument she went to cool off and get in the shower, and he came in the shower. After oh my god, a shower choking. attack! Yeah, shower attack. Ooh. And I'm like, that's the movie Psycho. Yeah. That's what I fucking. That's terrifying. I love that you've tied <laughs> film into it. <laughs> <laughs> Just there with it. Eh, eh. I like your. I like how it was like shower attack. <laughs> yeah, shower attack. <laughs> <laughs> the, the cruelest of all. Yeah. It is. The shower. Where do you attack. least expect it? Hey, I could no, slip. I, I could slip here. This could be fatal. I do like that one of the ex wives was saying like uh yeah he did choke me and he would choke me all the time i mean not enough to pass out but you know it still wasn't great (laughs) like you don't have to you don't have to justify yeah you don't have to i mean look there's a i didn't pass out but it wasn't good i got a good look there was choking i got a good look at her neck i don't think you could choke her till she passed out (laughs) i mean that was a really strong nice thick neck neck there shot putter yeah (laughs) i mean that was her defense she built that neck up east german olympic team (laughs) (laughs) hans hans Hans, female shot putter (laughs) hey michael what's up Hey, how you doing? I wanted to say a couple of things. First of all, I love your interviews with comedians. Oh, yes. They're there's uh, w- Yeah, one tomorrow with Doug, uh, Stanhope. Doug Stanhope. Oh, my God. That's yeah. wonderful. And he, uh, the first one that he had done with me, he hadn't been drinking and he had a panic attack. And it's like one of those things where you think everyone sees that sure. you're a panic attack, right. you know, <laughs> and... Um, 
And so he was very, you know, he was anxious throughout the whole thing. And this time he was made sure that he was pretty good and juiced up. And he felt comfortable. He, <laughs> he could do it properly. Stand-hope. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then he was almost like, I want to prove. You know what I mean? I'm right. not that dude. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> hey, I never, you know, picked up. Pretty loose before. today, aren't I? It's, it's, but he is a brilliant, brilliant comic, man. Oh, man. he's. A, I, yeah. was, I was with him uh, out in Aspen one year. And uh, his girlfriend at the time, not Bingo, who is yeah. with now, was the one before this i think and um the, i had finished my show and went to the bar and she said he he put her with me he goes here henley watch her while we could do this other show and we're in the same room yeah and the bartender comes over and starts giving me shots because he enjoyed the show that we had just done and, right and he starts handing me well then she starts doing shots with me and then started heckling him during his oh set. my oh, god, god. this hbo thing they're yeah. filming stuff and he's on stage <laughs> going god damn it henley and i'm like i didn't give it fucking to her i didn't give it to her she just happens to be sitting next to me and got liquored up beyond on belief. I love that it's your fault, not hers. <laughs> well, that's what he. <laughs> yeah. That's what I, I still tease him to this day. Uh, between that and then my other Stanhope is I was in England with Dave Fulton, who's an American comedian. Yeah. He lives in London, and uh, we were roaming around doing nothing in the middle of the day, and we passed a post office, and uh, and Fulton goes, "Oh goddamn, uh, hang on, I got to run in here. Uh, I got to mail somebody something." And we're in line, uh, like any other post office probably on the planet Earth. And he pulls and he goes, "I go, what are you sending? Who are you sending it to?" And he goes, "I'm sending Stanhope." some playing cards and he pulls a deck of cards out of his coat and it looks like naked lady playing cards from like the 70s yeah mm-hmm. like maybe one boob right it's like playboy center you know it's, just, it's early yeah. 70s you know and, and so every and i'm like yeah i go all right what does he collect naked lady playing cards from the 70s or something and he's like and fulton goes no no you're not looking close enough and he goes hands the deck back to me and i started going oh and then i look and it, it is it sort of stylistically looks like that but it's golden shower naked lady playing <laughs> cards from the 70s <laughs> So every picture, somebody's peeing on somebody. For the, and, so, and I go, does he collect? Does, how, he goes, no, he's just fucking Stanhope. I think he'll just, I just wanted to, I just want, yeah, I just wanted to have the idea in my head of Stanhope going to his mailbox and pulling these out one day. That's hilarious. And, so, uh, and the fact that someone, that's their business. They yeah. go, hey. You know how they do that. We could add it. We, you know, yeah. there's a market. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And in the meantime, you're still enjoying a game of cards. Yeah. You know what I mean, you're not just a perv looking at pictures. Right. Like you, you know? like it enough yeah. to enjoy it visually, but it's not distracting you no, from right. the game. From from seven cards. And just like oh, an enjoyable image. <laughs> <laughs> so, Michael, what did you want to talk about, buddy? Sorry. Yes. Yeah, I also wanted to talk. You guys were making fun of Wentz. Believe me, I'm a Raiders fan. I'm I'll take them any day, and if I was a Jets fan, which I am, I'd give them part of their team. What are you nuts? I'm gonna Wentz. The guy can't yeah. even finish his season. He had to have somebody come in. <laughs> I don't even think he should get a ring. Quarterback to come down the pike, and I don't know how long. Who knows if this knee is ever going to work again? You know what I mean? You got to stay healthy is part of the fucking game here. Sam Bradford, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sam Bradford when he is healthy, fantastic. Or Atlanta Falcons, the one year they made the Super Bowl was the one year the dude stayed healthy. Chris Chandler, I yeah, think. yeah, Chris Chandler, yeah. But played fifteen years and played yeah. four games a year in the fourteen of the fifteen years. Right. The one year he stayed healthy, the motherfucker made the goddamn Super Bowl. He finally did it, but and I, I, shit, how long are you going to wait on that? I agree. Sam Bradford is maybe the smartest. To quickest release. Everything is great about him. But when a friend of mine who's a Vikings fan, and they're just like, hey, Bradford looks amazing. Right? I go, I'll give him four games. Something else right. breaks. <laughs> Something else He's shatters. Made out of paper mache. Yeah. Where you take this Nick Foles and let's just face it, that kid's forever. <laughs> yeah. That's fi- that mm-hmm. kid's forever. It's true. <laughs> Arizona Wildcat. Tough. Oh, Tough. Yeah. Tough. <laughs> well, he's Austin, right? He was a born in he he said that nothing has been harder than playing high school football in Texas. In Texas. He says once you That's get out okay. and once you get done with that, he goes, Everything else, the pressure is off. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, all that's true yeah. for a reason. Oh yeah. You know. Absolutely. Now they're going to be in a dilemma next year. Yeah, well, that's the that's what I said. They got to get rid of Foles because immediately, if Wentz loses one game, the fucking radio is going to be filled oh, yeah. with people. Bring back the yeah. Super Bowl MVP. Yeah. What are we yeah. doing? Come on, this guy's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> he stinks. <laughs> he brought us our first title in fifty eight years. Look, look at Chris Long. Hey, Nick. Helped us. Look at Chris Long looking like a fucking maniac. 
I always How enjoyed that, him there. Yeah. Couldn't yeah. even recognize. Ever since Joe Willie, I've always enjoyed the man in the fur coat. He had me too. It's very pimp daddy. I've always I, liked it. Uh, you know, it's great. I couldn't pull it off, but no. But and in New York, you have to wear it with paint all over it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a cow pattern yeah. fur splattered with yeah. consideration paint. <laughs> yeah, There's, you're not going to get out of that. Those guys are all pimped out for being. Yeah. I think I that they're like half. They're like half religious and just half party boys. That's always that's it's a, a lot of teams. Yeah. That's a lot of teams. I just again, I don't like the. I remember Detroit. John Kitna, who was a big yeah. old Bible thumper, and he was on the Detroit Lions one year, and they won their first six games of the row. They were six and zero. Oh. And then I was reading an article, uh, either in Sports Illustrated or online, and he said, "No, we, we've all we're all on Jesus. We're all, yeah. and we're going to make the playoffs, and it's going to be amazing." And they lost their next ten games, and I was just <laughs> jacking off happy about the whole the minute he invoked the Lord, yeah, oh and ten, fucker. <laughs> so, I just, I mean, really, they're young. This is their time to enjoy themselves. Yes. You know what I mean, pick them up, pick up Jesus once you get out. Yes. You know, then you, you find Jesus time. when the law finds you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's when you go find Jesus. I uh, like Peterson though. I, I like Peterson oh, when he yeah, played. Yeah. He was the he was a good backup quarterback. Yeah. But this is always funny about a guy who is a backup ends up becoming a good coach. Not the, guy, not the guys with the skills. Right. That's what I love so much about that whole storyline. Is so sweet. Like he was a backup quarterback. They win with Foles, who was the backup quarterback. It's like a movie. Yeah. Frank Wright, the quarterback yeah. coach, was the backup to Jim Kelly in Buffalo right. and <laughs> orchestrated the biggest comeback in playoff history. That was, an, and I never was a Bills fan, but that was one of the most exciting games I've ever seen it was, in my life. And then my, my trivia on that was he did it at Maryland. When, when he started doing right. it against the Oilers, he's in the huddle going, guys, I've done this. It, <laughs> we were further behind yeah. when I was at Maryland. Yeah. <laughs> he brought back like a 52 48 or something crazy. And then yeah. all he did was uh, get him to the Super Bowl and cause more pain. That was the sad <laughs> thing about it. Because no one, it, they were saying to Brady, would you have rather not been to the Super Bowl and lose? Because they don't blame you in years that you don't make it to the Super Bowl. They right. blame you on Super Bowl losses. And he goes, well, you can't win without getting here. He's saying, to the, but you got to <laughs> get here to Answer have a chance question. to win the Super Bowls. No, I know. Um, People hate the Patriots, and I agree with you. I said it going in that I thought the coolest thing about this as an Eagles fan is that you were going to get a chance to beat the team. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, that's who you, you know, want to be. Absolutely. That's who you no kidding. Do. Yeah, you always I want to knock out the real champ. And I love that you can't take it away from them for any reason. You can't go, oh, they ended up with this fluke team who got there. Like, there's no denying what a great game that was. Yeah, it was a great game. And full on team effort. They lost yeah. everybody. They yeah. they were yeah. uh, they lost every, they went through far more injuries I believe than the yes. Patriots yeah. did and then here we go the old next man up and the next man up manned up it's yeah. a damn good story even though they threw batteries and snowballs at Santa Claus I, all I'm that is part of the it. fun I'm yeah. happy that's about it. it you know it's gonna change now yeah oh really they're gonna be yeah, good they're gonna switch sure. you're saying this is gonna do it yeah, yeah. okay that's I, I, Look, I've never seen more optimism I will say this than Gail Bennington as a guy who grew up back in the in the divided <laughs> days to see blacks and whites riding together in a gay that's, neighborhood that's, it was <laughs> unbelievable i mean i see a progress that did not exist <laughs> burning yeah. couches yeah discussing how awful the couch looks de decoratively it, <laughs> before sitting it on when i when i was a kid too the like i would be in school and they would say like now down, down south there's still there's racism I go, down south? <laughs> <laughs> the fucking bell rings here and everybody starts punching each other in the hall. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know why. And the, the, and the other city that was the same way was Boston. Yeah. Those fucking oh, Boston God, days, yeah. they went bad shit. Right. And yet you're like, oh, it's terrible what's happening down south. <laughs> 
I don't know. Seems the same. <laughs> Seems the same across the board. I know. I've heard so many horrible racist stories from the Boston comedians down the yeah. years. Just you know, where they've said things and and and, and use the racism to get out of stuff. Right. Like you know, the, yeah. getting, getting pulled over and throwing out the N word <laughs> to the cop, and the cop going, "Oh!" And as soon as the cop hears the N word, he goes, "Oh, okay, you fellas, go right in. Yeah. <laughs> Everything will be okay." I'm like, I heard about this. I didn't think it was true. The, but the Boston would be racist against Protestants. Yes. You know what I mean? They didn't. They didn't. Really Really? Proddy cunts, yeah. bunch of proddy cunts and fiend yeah. bastards. Yeah. <laughs> but, what, what, I got both sides right. There. <laughs> Philly, in case you're good. wondering, <laughs> Philly is a city, and maybe the last one that does tell their children to go back and hit that kid. You know what I mean? They still, <laughs> they have that. Absolutely, God, that's well yeah. said, Ron. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. They still have that mentality, which used to be the whole country. You know what I mean? It's it's smaller down like people's parents used to tell them to fight and hit back and stuff. <laughs> and now it's only Philly that's kept up that tradition. Yeah. <laughs> They're old school. Yeah, they are. It's very old school. No, he nailed it. You're totally yeah. that's absolutely that's a good summation of and I like that. Yeah, about them. I do like that about them. You know. They're just regular street people. You wanted to say something, Chris? I want to let people know Vic Henley's in the studio. He's uh, performing all over New York City this month, and you can see Vic performing with Ron White in Stanford, Connecticut, and Westbury, New York, March 9th and tenth. TaylorSalad dot com for tickets. You can see Vic at Comedy Off Broadway in Lexington, Kentucky, Wednesday the twenty March twenty eighth to March thirty first. ComedyOffBroadway dot com for tickets. And if the cats are by some miracle in the final four, we will be tailgating in the club. I've been I've been there before, and we did that. We canceled that, the show one year because he you book these things. You know how it goes right. with comedy. You book nine months down the road, and uh, he booked me one year on Final Four weekend. And I'm like, you know, you just, he goes like, look, I've seen the roster. They're not even going. They'll make the tournament, but they right. there's no. If they make the Final Four, then I'll pay you your full salary. We will not do two shows, and we will drop the big screen and invite everybody in here. And uh, I go, you just sealed their fate and they made the final four that year that was the other way so saturday night we didn't do shows we dropped the big screen and <laughs> people came in and we drank and ate blue chicken wings that's <laughs> hilarious <laughs> stuff and, Kim, and then kimba walker broke their heart i think it was the yukon year uh, but uh but yes i'm in lexington i love going to lexington kentucky it's way know, better than louisville out of all the sports what's your favorite sports because college football college football hands down is my thing yeah yeah and that ridiculous championship well, game. especially my team, Auburn, beat the yeah. two teams that were playing for yeah, it. Both I, teams. I watched them beat Alabama. I was at that game. Yeah, that I remember I was watching yeah. you on Twitter, and I was cracking up because that place looked insane. My niece married an Alabama guy, and he got mad with five minutes to go and left. <laughs> <laughs> and we really? weren't we weren't even doing anything to him. Yeah. We were not doing anything to him at all. He's just an entitled, a little spoiled because they win a lot and they yeah. won again. Uh but but it was uh, I was thoroughly enjoyable. They they got married in September and he got a, two he's two months into the marriage. I'm like, you ain't gonna fucking make it, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. And that game was a beatdown. I was, mean that it was wasn't, not, even, it wasn't that close, y'all. Auburn yeah. kind of manhandled him. Just was, yeah. beat the shit out of him. And then they were like, Yeah, but we really won Alabama in the playoffs. So, so it's really yeah. good. It's Ohio good State for business. fans are still mad. Still yeah. mad. You know, Georgia fans should be mad because the Alabama guy uh, sacked the Georgia quarterback and shoved his head into the turf in front of everybody, yeah. pounded his head. In the NFL, he would have been a penalty, uh, thrown out of the game, and a fine. And mm -hmm. they did nothing. They did absolutely nothing. And uh, that was a turning point in the game. I hate to be a whiner about a bad call, but that's how much I hate the fucking Tide. Yeah. <laughs> so you're a lifelong Auburn guy. Always. Yeah. yeah. So you were there during the Bo Jackson. I, we were there at the same time. Charles and I, yeah. Bo's one year. Year older, Charles and I left. Charles left in eighty three after three years, and uh, and and Bo was uh, eighty one. He came in, so he was there eighty one, eighty five. But yeah, it was that, really fun. Charles yeah. in person, Chuck person. I was yeah. just talking about earlier. Nobody would go see him play. I, they were in football school. I remember them walking yeah. around the student cafeteria with tickets. They would go up to go. Hey, we're playing Georgia. They got a guy named Dominique. He's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you want to come see this. Maybe we'll get more than fucking three hundred people in the fifteen thousand seat arena because it was a football school. So, yeah. what was it like seeing Bo though early on? It was amazing. Good. He just was, right well, away. Absolutely. You knew. Well, yeah. I, we watched him. I watched Bo. Bo ran track. 
his freshman year, and uh-huh. then he switched to baseball for the next few. But his freshman year, we went to the track meet one year because Herschel was running track for Georgia, and Bo was running for Auburn. Wow. And Harvey Glantz, who won a gold goddamn medal in the Olympics, beat both of them. And it was, but to, to see two guys that are 6'3", 235, standing next to the little like 5'11", 185 pound sprinter, yeah. and, and all three of them leaning at the tape, one, two, three, it's one of the best foot races I've ever seen. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Herschel was an amazing. And same I mean, thing, him and Bo, yeah. too. Bo won the decathlon uh, two years in a row, junior and senior, and uh, skipped the 10th event. The 10th event is, <laughs> is he had enough points that he didn't have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> so the 10th the event is the 1,500 meters, the mile run. Yeah. And uh, he goes, I'm a sprinter. I don't need to do this. And he had enough points. He'd just fucking take a zero on the 10th <laughs> event and still won the state championship, too. High jump seven feet. Oh, Both. God. Yeah. Okay. A big guy, a thick guy like that. I yeah. know. Seven that's, feet. That's really not. I was down in uh, living in Florida when uh, Culver House fucked up that whole thing oh. with Bo Jackson. Oh. And the city just fucking hated him. How do you blow that? Yes. <laughs> How do you blow that? But this guy was like a... A, like a cartoon bad guy. You know what I mean? Like he was... <laughs> Snidely whiplash? Yeah. It was almost like if there was a name, his name could have been Big Sugar. You know what I mean? It was just, you're just looking at him going, even though I don't want this guy to feel any joy at all. And he insulted Bo. Yeah. And it was something like from the like early night, like we understand you run around with white girls and you know we got to watch uh, you know just something that oh stupid in the 80s you know yeah. what i mean when mtv is on fucking tv <laughs> people don't worry about this shit anymore <laughs> and um he's like fuck that and and just having that meeting fucked up his baseball he couldn't play baseball because he wasn't supposed to have right. that meeting and they told him that he could right so he's like don't fucking draft me i will not play for you trade me Whatever you got to do. And Culver House wouldn't do it. And that's why he went and played baseball. It was never his intention, I don't think, to play no. two sports. Hey, no, no. Yeah, no. He was pushed into he it. He liked it. And he did like I mean, yeah. he a hell, of a hell of a baseball player. It was so much fun to watch that. It was <laughs> so much fucking fun. There's a dude in our town where I grew up that tackled him. We were playing them in high school. And uh, it would have been, a, they were on the five yard line. He played at McAdory High School in Birmingham. Bo did. And it would have been a 95 yard touchdown run. But Leland Hughes. White dude from our school ran him down on the angle. He had the angle, right. so he he <laughs> Bo, Bo breaks it at the five, and then Leland Hughes jumps on his back at about the other twenty, yeah, and then literally just grinds him down to the ground at about the other five, yeah. So it's like a nine, it's a ninety yard run, but it's not a touchdown. And Leland Hughes still gets laid to this day. <laughs> <laughs> he runs a Stanley Steamer carpet cleaning business in Oxford, Alabama. And every now and then, there's still a lonely housewife of the right age. He goes, aren't you the guy that ran down boats? Come on in here, sweetie. I never gave up hope. I just said to myself, just go for it. I play, I play the whole game. That's my way. That's my way. That is so great, though, that you can have that one moment. One tiny like, moment. <laughs> That's fantastic. Chris, you look like you want to plug. That's my I favorite just want to let everyone know. Vic Henley's in studio. He's performing all over yeah. New York City this month. And you can see Vic before with Ron White in Stanford, Connecticut, and Westbury, New York, March 9th and 10th. Tatersalad.com for tickets. And you can see Vic at Comedy Off Broadway in Lexington, Kentucky, March 28th through the 31st. Comedyoffbroadway.com. For I'm, with, I'm also with Kathleen Madigan in Texas, Austin, Houston, and Dallas, uh, May 3, 4, nice. and 5. How great is she, man? She's fabulous. Awesome. Yeah. I was just with her. We were in Michigan. Is that right? We were in Michigan and we went to like a hip joint for breakfast in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I forgot the name of it. And they toasted her. They got toast. Her and the tour manager both got toast. And it came back and the toast was not toasted on one side. And then the one to- side that they toasted was just barely. I mean, like if you ran a big lighter across it. Just <laughs> barely toasted. Yeah. And, and, and everybody's got a green hair and nose rings right. and all this stuff. And the, and the way it came back and they, they both went, our toast isn't toasted. And I'm like, they're not from England. They like it on both sides. <laughs> yeah, right. And then the hipster girl went, I don't think you guys realize the complexities of toast. <laughs> yeah, I do. And took it and wandered <laughs> off and didn't come back for like fucking 15 minutes later. Finally came back with it properly toasted. So it's pretty complex. Toast. It's really? <laughs> yes. It's pretty. You guys don't really get it. I Yeah. Look, I like when someone said, are you, uh, would you like to try our spin on pizza? I'm like, no. <laughs> this pizza. 
<laughs> it's a perfect thing. Toast is done perfectly. You don't need to sit around and think about toast anymore. By the way, that just made me think of any restaurant you go into that where they say, have you been here before? And you're like, oh, boy. Oh, and you're shit. like, uh, no, we haven't. And she's like, oh, okay, so let me explain the menu to you. And you're like, if a menu is not self-explanatory, you're right. doing something Sorry. wrong with right. your business. I like it when literacy works for me. <laughs> like, I believe I can read it. should this. say all the things yes. that are on the menu. That's what it's <laughs> Don't deconstruct it. Don't deconstruct it. I spin on yeah. There's always like, like a spin on a burger. <laughs> yeah. Uh-uh. No. No, there's nothing new that needs to be done. It's pepperoni or not pepperoni. You don't have to think anymore. Well, it's Carl, you know Carl Ruiz, yeah. the mad cube and the crazy cube and Carl, yeah. the chef. Uh, Carl said, and it's not Carl's line, but uh, another chef told Carl that if it's not just a pizza, is meat, cheese, sauce, and, and that's it. And if you got anything else, he goes, I'll let you call it a flatbread. But you're right. not fucking calling it a pizza. <laughs> if it's not, if, if there's pineapple and veggies, no, yeah. it's not a fu- pizza. Is salami, pepperoni, uh, sausage, and, and cheese, and so that's it. No, there's no uh, you, anything else is a fucking flatbread, right? Uh, according to the Cuban, I would, uh, I, I, I kind of get where that's coming from. And the Sicilian, you're not even supposed to put meat on. If you put it ah, any meat yeah. on, it's not a Sicilian anymore. But Carl is the perfect example. That food is great. You know uh, what I mean? Yeah. And it seems like. His grandmother made it the same way. He's got you know? you, and since we're watching the parade, he yeah. has you a cup and a hat from the game. Is that right? He Aww. told me to tell you. He t- he, I, yeah. was on the, I, I told him I was coming down here about two hours ago, and he goes, tell Bennington I got him a cup and a hat from the game because he's a Philly fan. Well, so you got some Super Bowl swag from the Cuban, you know, if which you, means it'll be the wrong color. Yeah, if you <laughs> throw that in with a box of food. Um, <laughs> nice. yeah. Oh, the Cuban's food's outstanding. That's yeah, unbelievable. Are you kidding me? Uh, Marie's uh, Italian specialty yeah. from Chatham, New Jersey. I'll plug it. Yeah, I will too, man. <laughs> See, I have people that come over from Jersey, and I have them swing by and pick up some food there all the time. I, I was in Baltimore at Magoobies for New Year's Eve, and we were driving home, and Carl put a picture on Twitter of or Instagram or both of the yeah. pork ragu rigatoni thing yeah. that he was making that day. And my girl went, made me veer off. We went 40 minutes, coming up 95, we yeah. went 40 minutes out of the way into Jersey and stopped and had to put uh, up like the, uh, the thing Italian from his, his family's uh, Marie's, place. Marie's Italian Specialties. Um, because he's Sabor show- Chef, he's S A B O R yeah. Sabor Chef on Instagram, and uh, I'm going to show Gail some of this because his food is just like it's uh, phenomenal. Uh, it's crazy good. He makes sand- yeah. he tells everybody he makes sandwiches. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. he goes, yeah. I make fucking sandwiches for a living, <laughs> and he does, and they're amazing sandwiches. But the rest of the fucking food is crazy good. Yeah, it's great. You don't you don't know how to find images, huh, Chris? I'm, he's I'm looking. looking. Yeah, he's working it. There it is. I think, perhaps. No, that's in New York. That's Maria. He's How long has Chris, been, Chris been working with you here for, what, what 10, 12 years? Yeah, and he Still is. Still can't run the board. No, no, no. But the <laughs> thing that's great is it's a, he doesn't snitch. He's not a rat. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, loyalty, it means more than anything else. And there's some good producers that are running a gossip column out of he's their say He's not going to throw somebody on the bus for taking a picture in the no. bathroom? And it would... <laughs> <laughs> You're saying that? He's, he's loyal and fun? Look at this stuff. God. Oh, every bit yeah. of it, man. Well, that's him somewhere. He's no, he's at a Chinese place. That's Carl mm-hmm. taking a picture of his food. Look at that pizza right there. Um, yeah, Carl follow follows. Yeah, chef on Instagram. He, he everybody knows, knows him too. Huh? Like all the everybody on the chef. planet Earth. Yeah. yeah, they all know him. Every, yeah. Everybody. I mean, everybody knows that he's the can opener. Is what he told me his nickname was because in the restaurant world he can open any restaurant. He's the can opener. <laughs> the can opener. So if you, they, all these high end money guys and chefs, when they've got an idea to open up a new place, they hire the Cuban to go in nice. and get it off the ground and run for him. He's he's the can opener. That's and that's the, the that's the whole thing. If you can get it up and running. Yep. You're you can run on for years, but if you have a bad opening and it doesn't like the early reviews stank and yeah. the early kind of taste master. That's Carl's food right yeah. there. Because there is like a thing like if you make it after a certain amount of years, you know what I mean. You get that first initial like pop or like people are checking you out. Yeah. But if you survive, I don't know. It's like two year, three year mark. You can you That's might it. have a good enough stride. Yes. 
Well, the Flex Muscles is in my neighborhood. It's on uh, like 82nd and yeah. between 2nd and 3rd Avenue, and all they have is muscles. And uh, Carl knew when I told him where I lived, he went, oh, I opened Flex Muscles. And it's, it's, you, you can't get in. It's packed. It's been packed for yeah. 10 or 12 years. It's amazing. He goes, the, the Money Boys made Carl go to Prince Edward Island and live there and, and work at a little muscle shack and steal yeah. every idea from the locals. <laughs> That's wow. crazy. He lived there for three months. Now, you talk about putting your time in and knowing yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. And then he comes back and he almost flex muscles. It's no surprise that it's a success for 12 years. That's yeah. your, uh, your people, Gail, on, yeah. your, on your mom's side. Uh, kind of, their uh, muscles. No, they're from Prince Edward Island, so Ooh. they are those yeah. kind of Frenchies. Mm -hmm. She's got Italian on one side, and, and the other French. one is Irish French. Yeah. yeah, they have twenty three kinds of muscles. They flex muscles every day. Isn't that crazy? Twenty two are on the menu, and then yeah. one is the one of the day, and then you can get fish and chips. And other than that, I think that's all that's on the menu, and that's all they need to do. That's, that's what you try to fucking tell it's places. So good yeah. too. You, know? you sit there dunking fries and bread in that sauce, whatever design you've chosen. Yeah, yeah. Cajun, uh, the original with white wine and yeah. butter and herbs. You know, the, it's all so good. I love muscles. That is true. That you know that you're not. Not in a good place if they have too big of a menu, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, keep it tight. And then if you don't like that kind of food, don't go there. Well, it, uh, we went in somewhere, and C Carl's got a friend who's a food writer named Nick Solaris, and the same thing they handed us, and it was laminated. And Nick's like, you know, the only thing that should be laminated is a karaoke menu. <laughs> 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 He's like, what are we, because you're going to sing some Skinner and Henley? Or are you gonna have to, I go, so you're not a fan of the Cheesecake Factory, I'm guessing, Nick. <laughs> He's like, fuck the Cheesecake Oh, he would live it on. You the know, I've never factory. been to a cheesecake it's fine. factory. It's yeah, fine, I guess but, I've been you know. to like all the Ruby Tuesdays and all that, but I've never been to a cheesecake. It's factory. A, but it's what you just said. It's, it's giant, a book. Giant. Yeah, it's yeah, got I've a spiral that. binder. Yeah, it has a spiral. <laughs> your menu should not have a spiral binder. Yeah, and be a menu. <laughs> well, what is your chain? That do you sit there? Outback Steakhouse because of the Bloomin' Onion. The Bloomin' <laughs> Onion. I went there last Tuesday. My yeah. girls' kids love that. We love yeah. the Bloomin' Onion. It's fucking delicious. The Bloomin' Onion is here. His idea, and um, for his big birthday, we're like anything you want. He goes, I'd Outback love, Steakhouse. Yeah, Outback Steakhouse, blooming onions. Just give me some blooming onions. We had, sauce. we opened. Then I, the kids were thrilled when I explained to them. I'm like, not only is the blooming onion a success, the dude who invented the machine that makes yeah. the blooming onion, he's who cashed in. Yeah. yeah, he made a jillion with his one fucking Santa Flo idea, Mister Bloomin'. And you know what? <laughs> he didn't go to them at first. You know where he went, and they turned him down. Fridays. No. Hooters. Oh, was it Hooters? Hooters. See, and, that would have yeah. been huge for them. They, they, a little bit. Hooters. The guy, had the Hooters. Onion. Yeah, the guy from Hooters said, oh. "Biggest mistake I ever made in my life." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like the orange shorts? No, <laughs> no, I did not take the blooming onion when I had the shot. Because you think about this: if you take the blooming onion away from Outback nothing. Steakhouse, they got garbage. nothing. They garbage. got nothing. Oh, but that fucking blooming onion's delicious. But you'll be willing to put up with a, a, any other food 100%. in order to get yourself a blooming yeah, onion. Just go there, get a blooming onion. Do That's you it. have one, or you go a couple? Two, a three, couple, blue, yeah. couple, yeah. Because you get the loaded. That, you know, they're now loading the blooming onion. I've heard about this. <laughs> I haven't been yet. Though. I didn't get it. I got the. I stuck with the Standard. tradition. Yeah. I stuck yeah. with the tradition. They're like throwing cheese fries in the middle, like bits of steak. Yeah, like it's, there is. But it's I crazy. Just, yeah, I don't know if they need to do that. I gotta <laughs> agree with you guys. Giant fried onion. Yeah, it's like it's, there's more batter than actual onion. And what's delicious. the blooming onion sauce that's like, so good? Oh, ketchup and horseradish. It's, it's kind of mixed. So yeah, yeah. It's yeah. A little mix. It is. It's sort of thousand. Whatever it is, it's covered. delicious. But no, not really. Fucking great. Well, Hooters blew it. <laughs> they had a chance at the brass ring. <laughs> <laughs> so that guy made a fortune for himself, I huh? Did. Yeah. That's, oh, I can't wait to. Yeah. You know who's going to enjoy this story? Yeah. Ron fucking White. He's going to love this story. <laughs> I'm going Ron to Ron with good info <laughs> on this one. And you guys are having a ball out on the road, huh? Oh, he just did another special. We, we, yeah, he's just, yeah. Uh, he just did, uh, he taped uh, three shows, uh, Friday, the twenty late January, the last yeah. weekend, for, the off weekend for the Super Bowl, and he said it went well, and he was really happy, and he's got tons of stuff that he's doing now. He's got it's all really funny and new. And I never in Not my that any of it wasn't, but in my mind, I never see him like like 
at his house trying to figure out. It just seems like it's top of. He doesn't. He's yeah. one of the few guys that doesn't have a notebook. Yeah, he just goes up and he was giving me shit about it. You know, a <laughs> yeah. month ago, we were like, I can't believe. It. I'm like, you're the only one that doesn't have the notebook. Don't be giving me shit. You're the one one millionth of percentile. And he's like, he put he'll write. There's work, but I don't even see words on a piece of paper yeah. around his house. When he goes on stage, there's like a set list in front of him. Right. That has just topics, the yeah. bullet points. But other than that, you know, when he because he says shit to me all day long that I'm trying to. He was telling me a story about living in Austin. He lived when they lived in Houston, and his best friend, who was his tour manager forever, who passed away a few years ago, or three years ago, he knew him for fifty years, and they had a friend in Austin that would let him come visit him, but he wouldn't let him sleep in the house. He would make him bring sleeping bags and sleep <laughs> in the yard. <laughs> so they would have to put a tent up and sleep. But they, but Austin was such a fun, awesome place. Yeah. They would road trip up, and and if Ron's looking at me. We're on the bus. Where it's like two o'clock in the morning. He's like, "You gotta find a special woman that'll go back to the yard with you. <laughs> Not just anyone is willing. Hey, you want to go to the yard? <laughs> he's living in Austin now, right? Yes, he yeah. bought he bought a great place. And so I'm like, right. I grabbed a legal pad because there's legal pads yeah. on the bus. And I'm I'm like, write this fucking down. This is hilarious. Yeah. He's like, fuck you. We're partying. Put that shit down. <laughs> Light that joint. Goddamn it. Went out while you were talking, Mister Creative. <laughs> <laughs> that is so great, man. You gotta put out, and there's there's no telling how much he's throwing away a special right. a week. Yeah, it's probably. Just, yeah, just from just you know babbling. But, but if he then the same thing is if you tried to correct that. You would make him into a normal good, comedian. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's the worst thing about it. You're like, all this is great, but if, but if you put a chain on him, you're gonna fucking ruin that yeah. too. You know? Yeah. And Stan hopes the same way. Those guys live a special. Yes. You know what I mean? They're living right. great stories. Now Kathleen hears it and yeah. we'll she does what I do and yeah. like most comics do. Well, if it catches your ear perfectly and you know right. this, we'll run, grab a napkin and yeah. write it down or a piece of paper. There's always I've said it on stage. Oh my God, somebody write this down. I just said this. I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> I've walked off stage and had five different people. We wrote it down, you said to. <laughs> I'm like, thank you. <laughs> I think it's great to tell the audience, shut that down. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dad, it's good, good to one. see you again. I didn't know it's been this long. That's been uh, seven months. I was yeah. not allowed in. Well, I wasn't. It's not that I wasn't allowed in. Yeah, you, I, we checked. I was going to call. Oh, did you yeah, ask? Yeah, I was going to. We had to make sure. I was going to send Gail a text, and I was going to make. I was, Hick, there was a famous Hick story from a million years ago where he was in the car with somebody, and he uh, they're riding. They're in. Uh, they're like in Tampa, and they're going down to you know Fort Lauderdale for the gig. And Hicks tells the other comedian, "I'm going to be Keith Richards for the whole ride. I'm just going to talk <laughs> as Keith Richards. I will not answer yeah. you in my voice. I will only be answering you as <laughs> Keith Richards." And I wanted Gail to do Fran Lebo. <laughs> I do. I do want to come in here one time like, for twenty minutes. She is only allowed to answer. All right. Here's what she does. She does all these voices that I would milk forever, right. And then never does them again. <laughs> never well, does them again. I'm gonna be honest. Ron, I feel like it's the wrong. It's the wrong one. There you go. I feel like Vic is one of the few people who got it when I did it. You didn't so. have to it get was, it. I just finished the book. I, all, yeah. I was always a big, big fan. Yeah. But that particular day, yeah. I literally had just reread the book. Stuff. Yeah. And if she started doing it, I'm like, oh, I want to marry you. <laughs> this is the greatest thing in the world. All right, that's it for us. Uh, Vic Henley's been in the studio. He's performing all over New York City this month, and you can see him with Ron White in Stanford, Connecticut, in Westbury, New York, March 9th and 10th, tatersalad.com for tickets. And with Kathleen Madigan in Austin, Texas, May 3rd, 4th, and 5th, kathleenmadigan.com for tickets. And he'll be at Comedy Off-Broadway in Lexington, Kentucky, from uh, March 28th through the March 31st, comedyoffbroadway.com for tickets. All right, and we'll see you guys in here tomorrow or again in 1974. Thanks, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, the evening is over. We hope you all enjoyed yourselves, and we'll see you all again in 1974. Good evening! Good evening.